All right. Welcome, everybody. Man, it's good to have you guys here. Thanks for being with us today. Who's ready for a makeover? Listen, so I see a lot of guests in the house. Uh, for you guys that are guests, I'm Dr. David Herb. This is my wife, Dr. Kimberly Herb. Uh, if you get confused, she's the pretty one on stage. So uh, listen, so we're going to have a lot of fun today, but I just I want to start with this. First of all, I don't think that we've ever needed this more than we ever have right now. Uh, so for some of you guys, this is the first time you've really popped your head out of a COVID shelter, so to speak, uh, for a little while. Uh, some of you guys that are used to our events are used to, you know, two, three, four hundred people at an event. Obviously, this is not one of those events. Uh, and so the reason for that is because we're, we're still coming out of that season. Uh, but I'm going to say prophetically right now that you've already come out of that season. And so uh, for me, I just I want to start with. So February 8th, uh, we actually got together on an event like this called New Beginnings. Raise your hand if you went to the last big event that we were at. So a lot of you guys were there. Uh, shame on you guys that didn't raise your hand. Uh, but at that event, at that event, we could not have forecast that literally right after that event that we would have the person of the year for 2020 be mayhem from the insurance commercial. So, li- so literally, so, yeah, is that true or false? Yeah. So I had a patient go, uh, I don't, I don't need somebody to mug me or beat me up. 2020 by itself as a year has done a great job of that. But here, here's the thing. I could not have forecast that stuff was going to happen, but I was talking about during that time uh, that we have to move through hardships. And if you look at the hardships we've gone through since the COVID thing really uh, was unleashed or I don't get conspiracy theorists or whatever else, through the season we've been in, you saw some people were a whole lot more affected by that than others, right? And the people that weren't as affected uh, had something going internal to them that the person who just identifies as a person who's just a workout person, when you couldn't get to a gym and all the gyms were closed, they still figured it out, got it? The person who identified as a person who uh, eats right because that's who they are, they couldn't get certain fruits and vegetables and stuff at the grocery store or toilet paper, for that matter. Uh, but guess what? They figured it out. And so the, I started with a, a um, it's really a rule of life. And I'm going to actually just hit that again before we get too far into this. And it is core, core, or I'm going to say identity, okay, versus concept. And the reason this is important is because Today, if you really want to get something new, if you want to become a better person, get to the places that you want to get, finally, get some change, you've got to get to core and identity rather than concept. Because at the root of it, for example, concepts, we, we get concepts. You're going to get a lot of absolute high level. In fact, I will prove to you by the end of the day between uh, my wife and I that there is nothing out there as far as a reproducible system of health that works better than what you're going to hear about right now. Whether it's for gaining weight, for losing weight, for getting lean, to getting off medications, reversing diseases and diagnosis, literally there's nothing better than what you're going to hear today. But at the end of the day, I'm going to give you the truth and the science behind it, but it can either start to become your core identity or it could be another concept. And like a, a concept is, it's, a, it's conceptual that you know that eating an apple is better than a candy bar, right? Yeah. It's, it's conceptual that eating vegetables rather than a lot of bread is going to be better for you. Yes? yes? However, I might know that, but then my actions may not suit it. And I'm not saying we have to be perfect, okay? But my point is, do you see how there's a difference between core identity and concept? What we've got to do is get you to move from here to here, because at the end of the day, guess what? I can't prophesy what's going to happen exactly. Actually, I read the end of the book. I can exactly tell you what's going to happen. But I... The point is, in the next month, the next 40 days, you're going to have a quarantine challenge, which quarantine is is based on a 40-day thing. The next 40 days, starting Monday, you're going to have an amazing life change. But the problem with it is, if it's a concept, what happened last time when you made new new, uh, resolutions, New Year's resolutions, those things, when hard times hits, when you can't get the food or the gym closes, or you really don't want to get out of bed to go work out, or someone brought a cheesecake to your house... Thank you. You're not really a friend. But the point is, what happens is when hard times get bigger, when um, 
the the things that you really want become providential ahead of you to to lure you out of where you want to go, what happens is we go back to concept again. Everybody with me on that? So you go back to concept and we don't ever change our identity. And because it's not identity for you, literally we keep going and we keep getting discouraged. And what ends up happening is I know a lot of concepts of what I should be doing. Raise your hand if you've been to more than one or two things with me in the past. Raise your hand if you've read books or watched shows or watched a uh, YouTube video or something about getting better or self-help, whatever else. Now, put those down. Almost everybody in the room has done that. Now, what you did is you, you got concepts. And what you did was you started to realize what you should do and what what? What you shouldn't do. And the problem with us in an exhaustive information age, just like uh, two, two uh, people in creation who got the knowledge of good and evil, guess what? You've been walking around with what you should do and what you shouldn't do. And because you haven't been doing what you should be doing anyway, the last thing that a lot of people watching online today or you today want to get is a whole nother group of shoulds that you're not doing. Because what you end up getting is guilt and shame. And nobody showed up today. Hey, can I get a whole new, can I get a whole nother wheelbarrow of guilt and shame in my life? Like nobody wants that. And you know what? We don't want it for you either. And so what I want you to get is I want you to get a life that's not about searching for perfection. It's about searching for direction. Got it? Because at the end of the day, this is not about your goal. I love goals. Listen, I'm a, I'm a goal-oriented person because of my wife. I wasn't originally. She made me one. But this is about who you grow into as you are on the unfolding narrative of your life as God is faithful to complete a good work that he's begun in you. Now, for my guests and for the thousands of people that will be watching this now, and in, in the, we talk about live or later, live now or later online, uh, I pastored a church with my wife for several years. Uh, it's just who I am. You're going to hear about Jesus, and I'm unapologetic. I'm going to have some Bible scripture. Uh, it's just principled stuff. It's also the most researched book in the world in the history of mankind. So I'm just going to throw some stuff out there. If, if it, it hits you wrong, maybe come see me afterwards. We'll talk about Jesus. But... This, this is, this is about a journey. Got it? And the identity who you need to become is linked in it. And it all falls into one law. Everybody say one. It's one law. If you've ever had anything that actually worked for you in your life, it's because you use this law. And the the law is the law of change. And this law of change has three steps. The first step, and I talked about this in, in February, but I had no idea how appropriate be work the system work the system okay the second one actually let me just do this the second one okay invest the time good and the third one say it problem solve along the way okay problem solve along the way so work the system Invest the time, problem solve along the way. You want to work the system, invest the time, and problem solve along the way. If your marriage has ever gotten better, you did that. If your health has ever gotten better, you did that. If your if your finances ever got better, you did that, right? But here's the thing. If you only continue on in concept and not in identity, what will happen is you'll start to lose hope. I want to just talk to that for a second. You guys... I, I could see it like if you are half as excited about today as I was, I, I was like, take a four year old at Christmas morning and then times it by 10. <laughs> like uh, the, the grays are here. They have their grandson with them. We're going to spend some time later today. And he is like, like this, everywhere he goes. And that's like my avatar on the inside. <laughs> like I couldn't sit still. I was so excited about today. You guys brought your game faces, and I love that. And I want you to play hard and really lean into just being social again and getting your head out of the COVID crazy. But here's the thing. At the end of the day, there are some of you that rolled in here, and you are tired on the inside, if you're being honest. And the pastoral heart of me, it's, it's, I, with a tear in my eye, it's hard for me to see you guys really, really tired. You're weary. And the reason that you're weary is because you have been so emotionally charged over and over and over again. Like on my on your Facebook page and or my Facebook uh, page or whatever else, I don't have anybody. I've gotten rid of everybody that doesn't have the same social, political, and spiritual views as me so I don't have to fight any battles because I'm so tired. 
But I get on there and scroll, and everything that's being posted is so incendiary, I agree with it. But it really gets me going again. (laughs) And I'm so tired of getting and going again that I'm tired. And that fatigue, let me tell you exactly what that is. That fatigue is a, like if you had a gauge, like a gas gauge, and you could see it right here, for hope. And a lot of you guys are starting to tank towards E, and you don't even know it. But if you don't fix this, and I'm going to show you how today, but if you don't fix that, what's going to happen is you're going to want to do this, and you're going to get excited. And I want you to get the product so you have what you need. I want you to get a game plan so you have what you need. But then you're going to get into this, and it, it, you're going to be tired and losing hope. And so what's going to happen is you're going to resist the system. So instead of working it, you're going to resist it. Anybody else uh, go to your where all your vitamins are? I have a place in my house where all my vitamins are. And then just certain days, you're just like, I just don't want to take my vitamins. Anybody else? Yeah. Hi, my name is David. Hi, David. I just sometimes just don't want to take my stuff. You know, I wake up at 4, 4.30, depending on the day, and I, I'm like, you know what? I really don't want to go get out of bed right now. Um, a lot of reasons, but I just don't want to get out. I just, I'm what? I'm, I'm tired, okay? And so what happens is I'm losing hope, so I resist it. That's your first cue in. I want you guys to remember that for, the, for this next 40 days and for the rest of your life. If you ever feel like you're resisting the system, it's because you're losing what? Hope. hope. Now, what happens is the next phase of that is instead of investing the time, you start resenting the time that you've already put into it. Man, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I put all the time in that. Man, it was a waste of my time. Dang. And you start resenting it. Everybody with me? That's level two. That means that your hope tank is what? Really, it's starting to have a red light, okay? And then last but not least, you get to a three. Instead of problem solving, you recognize the problems, but all you do is what? Complain about it. Man, I just can't lose the weight. I, maybe I'm just too old. That knee, I knew that I should have got that knee. That, that Dr. David talked me into this. <laughs> Whatever I got to do. The first step is self-recognizing that I'm having issues. And the only time that you guys will actually see you have issues and catch it early is if you start to what? Resist the system. Got it? But I can tell you as we go into today, I want you to really understand one thing that I said last time. Inevitably, we're all going to sit down to a banquet of consequences. And some of you guys are going to have an awesome banquet. And some of you guys... If things don't change, and I'm believing everybody here is just going to have an amazing future. I do believe that. But I sit down with people all day long who are walking through their worst nightmare. And today, the reason we're doing this is because you just don't have to. That's not what God created you for. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right. So uh, we're going to bring some people up. Dr. Kimberly, are you guys ready? Come on. This is so good. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm going to give this to you. I was just thinking and praying before I came out here, and the Lord brought to my memory an event like that we did just like this to 5,000 people in Zimbabwe, Africa. We had 2,500 people in the morning and 25 people in the evening, and I want to say it was a total of 5,000 we did in one day. I want to say shout out to Zimbabwe. All of our people in Zimbabwe, we love you. We're praying for you. And so God brought to my mind that that event was incredible, but it's really nothing compared to what I'm seeing right here. To me, right now, because of what we've all been through together, yes? And so I'm just looking out here going, man, like, this is incredible. You guys look so, you got your sweatpants off, you got dressed, like, you know? (laughs) I mean, like, we got... We got belts on, like this is amazing. We took a shower, some of us put some makeup on, like this is just awesome. So I know we wash our friends. This is just incredible. So I wanna be I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up some really good news. I wanna do a little bit of housekeeping before we do that. I've got some really incredible testimonies that I wanna bring to you guys. Couple things of housekeeping that I wanna do with you is I wanna kinda show you how to do this event to give you the most success. Now, I think in your bag, you got something I want you to pay attention to. If you you see this image up there, you don't have to pull it out. 
I just want to show it to you. In your goodie bag, if you haven't noticed yet, is this puzzle. And what you do when you get home is you put this puzzle on your refrigerator. And this puzzle reminds you that you are putting the puzzle pieces of your life back together again. And I want you to remember that there are five pieces, just like our five essentials. And sometimes one of these pieces gets broken off and it kind of sits over on the side that's like kind of the neglected piece. It's still on the fridge, though. Okay? It's still there. And when you plug in, you can just grab that piece and kind of bring it back to all of its friends and kind of connect it. And just know that's what this is. All of us is one in unity. And also to know that you're not alone. Okay? You're not alone. We're all in this together. I promise you. The herbs are with you on all this. Like the sweatpants stayed on a long time. Okay? So the other piece I want to tell you is that... (laughs) He's not going to touch that one. I think I stepped into something. The other piece I want to tell you is inside your bag, I do want you to make sure you keep this handy because inside this, two things, you're going to be able to take notes. I've taken notes on this. I'm teaching it, and I've taken notes. So you're going to have some things that you should take notes about that you can take away as far as your action steps are concerned. Okay? So this is just, you're not going to be able to do all of this. But it gives you a few action steps to kind of go, all right, I'm going to get back to you. I'm going to work on this. And it just kind of tailors your kind of focus and your attention. We have a couple testimonies we want to share with you guys. So round of applause for a couple of our nervous uh, guests here. Come on over here. <laughs> so Kathleen, we'll have you come first. Okay. And then Jennifer. Okay. So um, everybody say hi, Kathleen. Hi. Okay. So, Kathleen, tell me and tell everybody, like, how did you, who, how did you find out about us first? Okay, it was Lucia Huff. Okay. She's so a friend of ours, and she was selling our house. Okay. And she said, I'd like to invite you to a dinner. It's free. So, and I was like, oh. So, how many people have been to a dinner? Okay. So, everybody who has not been to a dinner, just look at all these people. They've all been to a dinner, so it's okay. It's free. It's good, too. Okay, so... You came to dinner, and then what happened after that? You came in, and what was going on? I took advantage of the um, offer that night, Mm -hmm. and I paid for my dad, who is 92, and myself. Um, My right foot was continually falling asleep every time I stood, and I thought it was just my shoes. Well, a few chiropractic exercises and adjustments, I have no sleeping on my foot. (laughs) Okay, now um, tell them also a little more about you, and then we'll talk about your dad. Okay. So you also came to the last makeover. So the New Beginnings. How many went to the New Beginnings? Okay. So we kind of got robbed on that, didn't we? We got like 30 days in, right? So this is like a reset, all right? Everybody gets permission. It's a reset, okay? All right, so you went to the last makeover, and what happened? You did the... What were the results? I I took it seriously, and I began on the um, advanced, and I put my dad on the advanced because his doctor had said he needed to lose a little weight because we were not exercising as much, and I have lost 32 pounds at that time. It works, y'all. It works. Okay, we got to do what? What did it say? We got to work the system, invest the time, and problem solve along the way. Now, I want to tell you guys about her. Let's hear about her dad. So your dad is how old? My dad is 92. So that means you're never too old to get adjusted and get no. your spine checked. Okay. And tell us, like, what were, why did you want to bring him in? Well, he was on medication from his doctor because of arthritis in his neck. And he was complaining all the time that he couldn't move his neck. And um, as a result of the chiropractic assistance, um, I have taken him off of the medication. He is no longer on the medication. He does not complain about um, his neck pain at all. And he has flexibility because at one time I was even having to dress him in the morning and undress him in the evening. And he is now doing that independently. Come on. Right? And if you're a caretaker... You know exactly what that means, right? That is everything, right? So we, we love you. Oh, my God, I want to hug you right now. Okay, so tell me. Don't, don't, don't go anywhere. So who else did you refer to come in? And then um, it worked so much for my dad and I 
that I said, I've got to get my son and his lovely wife, who is my daughter in love, and involved as well. And so I invited them to the South Lake office. They came one time, and they said, this is fabulous. Thank you for showing us this activity in our lives. And they switched offices to this office because it's closer to their home. Okay, one more thing though. Tell me, tell me, tell me. He's like, I get, I get one of them, right? Tell me about his memory, your dad's memory. What did, what did you notice in 30 days of like the memory yes. differences? 30 days, and my dad became more alert. Um, he, the doctor had told us that we needed to walk him at least 30 minutes a day, and he got to where he was getting up on his own and walking to the back door and going outside and sitting down. And I'm like, Dad, you can't do this on your own. I didn't tell him that. But I make sure, and so I had to be more on the ball and more active <laughs> to keep up with him. <laughs> in fact, I'll, I'll say this: it got to the point where, when she, the first day she came in, like in front of him, she could kind of talk. We could talk about him because he didn't, he w- wasn't really present. And then after he, about thirty days, she's like, I can't talk about him. He knows everything right. we're talking about right now. <laughs> yes, and I, I have Dupin contractors in my hand, and um, my, it was actually one of my daughters that noticed, Mom, your your fingers are shriveling up, and um, it's hereditary, but with the chiropractic, in, um, I say the increase in circulation, I am now able to hold my hands out and so (laughs) guy is so good isn't he he's so good all the time all right jennifer come over here and let's switch and then so say hi to jennifer everybody okay so jennifer you came in because because like um my mother-in-law and you brought who with you um my husband and three kids okay your husband three kids well one kid really and you came to the you last. Brought three kids. I brought three kids. <laughs> and you came to the last makeover. I did. And um, what happened? You came in, and what was your motivation? What, what did you? What was your goal? What did you want to accomplish? I really wanted to lose weight. That was my main, my main goal. Um, I just, I wasn't spending much time with the kids. I was just so tired all the time. I wanted to sleep, sleep, sleep. And um, and so since then, I've. I have much more energy than I've had in years. I mean, probably pre-kid energy. And how much weight? I've lost um, 75 pounds. Seriously! Now, like, now I need you to know, we had a makeover in February. Some of us didn't problem solve very well along the way, but this one did. (laughs) Right? Right? So, like... Huge, incredible testimony. I'm super proud of you. Like, this is, and, and the other thing I noticed too is think about how many generations were affected by that one move that Lucia Huff, anybody else know Lucia Huff? Raise your hand. One move that one person did. Her dad, one generation, her generation, this generation, and her kids. Four generations were affected. Lives transformed. Legacies changed forever. Round of applause for these guys. By the way, I don't have Corona. I was crying right there, and my nose is running. So, anybody else have a fear of sneezing or coughing in public right now? I was in Orlando, and I rode to Walmart to get Zanae. We went to Orlando, and Zanae forgot her bathing suit to Orlando. So I went to Walmart, rode in an Uber with 15 different air fresheners in the car. Anybody had that Uber yet? And I got out, and I'm like neurotoxic, and my throat is itchy. I got into the Walmart, and I started coughing so bad, I couldn't stop coughing. Anybody have a cough? You couldn't? I was like this. Huh? 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 It was as if I threw a live grenade in Walmart. I guess there's people like, no! So, I really want to I want to start this whole thing off before we get into how to eat, how to exercise, detoxification, all the essentials. I want to really I want to set into the foundation of identity just a little bit more. Can I do that? I, I don't want to start with negatives, but there are consequences uh, to actions. Yes or no? Yeah. Right. So it's like we talked about the the inevitability of us sitting down to a banquet of consequences. Uh, for this, 
there's a lot of like just a little bit of, little bit of weight gain literally doubles your risk of diabetes, increases your heart attack risk by 75%. Having a BMI that's just a little bit high, and some of you guys don't even like BMI, although the data is clear. You go, well, it says I'm fat, but I'm not fat. Well, no, no, you're not fat in the fattest society in the world, right? But, but this, it literally says doubles your risk of heart failure, triples your risk of breast cancer in women. And again, it's just cause and what? Cause and what? Effect. But you know what? Is there a cause and effect in a positive way too? Certainly there is. Easy stuff. And I want to talk about this just for a second. And if you read this book, this is a great book. You should write this down if you're taking notes. Compound effect is about seemingly insignificant consequences that you take that have great, huge end results. And I just want to, I'm going to take my notes a little bit, but I want to give you a story of three friends. Can I do that? You guys just, so I like story time when I was a kid. So I'm going to give you a stool of story time too, just briefly. So I want you to imagine three friends there in college. They graduate. They go home or they go into a small town. They both, they all three get married and they have 2.5 children and get to work in real estate. Got it? Okay. <laughs> I don't know how you half a cot a child. I'm not going to make a bad remark. Anyway, so the point is, so you have three friends. They get into life, okay? Now, the, the first one, number one friend, basically, uh, he picks up something at some point in time about success, you know, and, and says, okay, I want to apply some of these things in my life. But they're, they're not big, okay? So just kind of listen to what he does. And so uh, he reads 10 pages of a good book or the good book uh, before he gets into his day. Just 10 pages. And what's 10 pages? It takes minutes, right? Nothing time at all. But he does it every day. And then when he gets in his car to drive to work, he basically just listens to something inspirational or something good as well, just while he's in the car, rather than listening to the news at first thing in the morning or um, even more you know, about riots and death tolls and whatever else on the way to work, etc. And so he just listens to something good. Okay? And then when he gets to work, he parks as far away from the office as he can, and then he walks it, maybe not even in the same parking lot. Okay? He does that. Okay? And then when he's in there, he drinks water. He drinks at least two big bottles of water a day. Okay, make sense, everybody? Everybody's kind of like, yeah, that's not, that's not a big thing. But the other thing he did is when he's at work, he actually, even when he's tired, he's ready to go home, he makes two more uh, prospecting calls for his, his real estate business a day. Even when he doesn't want to, before he goes home, just tries to make two more calls during the day, okay? Then when he gets home, uh, he actually, throughout the day, and then when he gets home, he actually is going to decrease his caloric intake by 125 calories. Now, I don't believe in counting calories, so let's not do that today. But the point is, he just had, you know, a ha- half of a handful of M&Ms less, or he didn't have this. Even intermittent fasting will do that. 125 calories, it's like one beer, something like this, right? So uh, just a little, some of you guys were like, do we get beer here? <laughs> no, that's not what I said. Or just 125 calories. Like, I like this plan already. Just 125 calories. And then watch this. That date night that really should have been a uh, priority all along, he's going to finally get that together. Now, how hard was that? It wasn't a whole lot of stuff, right? I mean, he's not getting ready for a marathon. It's just kind of changed the way he did life, okay? Just a little bit, a little bit. Now, we're going to let that play. The second friend is just going to be who he's always been. He's just going to keep working out at the same level, keep eating at the same level, uh, and, and just be the same guy. And then the third guy, he's going to be the guy who, uh, number three, he's going to be the guy that has life shift him a little bit. Got it? You know, the, the COVID shift, the race riot media baiting, get extremely excitable, uh, take illogical action. Just the guy that just gets upset a little bit. Got it? And so uh, rather than keep on track, he's not going to make some big changes where he blows up his life and goes to jail or something. But what he's going to do is he's just going to slide a little bit. So rather like at home, rather than um, really pay more close attention to his spouse, He's, he's really invested in what's going on in the world today, so he's going to scroll through Facebook for just a little bit longer, maybe 10, 15 minutes, not a big deal, right? His wife doesn't even mind because it's important to her. So they're both on Facebook even, maybe. Got it? Then he is going to miss a, just two workouts a week, but he's still going to be working out. He's still going to be walking or running or whatever else, but misses about two workouts a week because he's tired. Maybe he's got a headache or something like that. Then when it comes to the office, uh, he's going to go, but because of the kind of the slide of life, He's done pretty good in the past, so he's kind of he's, he's kind of on his heels a little bit because he's done good in the past, and so he doesn't make those two extra phone calls. He's kind of kind of staying with it, and he misses a couple meetings here and every once in a while. In the office, every once in a while, he's going to pick up a hand of M and M's or something at the the desk of the lady that's in front, and he's just going to just. It's just, hey, I deserve it. It's a little bit of treat. It's not a big deal, right? Or when he goes home, the other M and M nights where he's not doing that, he has a beer, he has a glass of wine. Don't let me step on your toes, you people that have been trying to self-medicate with wine through this whole thing. 
it got real quiet. You see, there wasn't any laughs. Yeah, laugh now. So uh, anyway, so he's going to do those things. Got it? And so now let this slide. Let this play out a little bit. Let's go five months. In five months, really don't see any big differences. Not a big difference in their marriages. Not a big difference in their weight. Anything how they look. It's just small, insignificant changes. Go ten months. Really don't see any changes in these guys. And the first guy's like, man, I've been, you know, listening to good stuff. I've been reading good books. I've been listening to tapes. I've been doing this stuff. I've been working out regular. I haven't missed. My diet's on. I'm I'm doing date night with my wife. Um, it's 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 good. I like it. I feel good about myself, which is good. Yes. But I don't see a lot of difference in my friends. Not that the re- that's not the reason he did it, but it's about the same. But watch this. Let it play. You see where I'm going? Let it play. Let it play. I see this in my mom, who's 78, uh, compared to some of the people that come in at that age. And it, my mom doing pull-ups at a CrossFit gym. She's on like day somewhere around day 80 of 100 days straight of doing 5Ks every day, including her workout. And like I'm like, huh, okay. So, but you see how this plays out? Now, let's, let's walk this out. So, if, so, first of all, the middle guy, number two, what do you think's happened to him over 27 months? Has he stayed the same? Some of you guys think you're staying the same, you're not. He's gained a little bit of weight. His marriage is not as good. He's not as happy as he used to be. And he's thinking about maybe another marriage would be good. Maybe another career would be good, right? He's, he's just disenchanted with life. Anybody ever feel that way, okay? Uh, the third guy, the guy that kind of shifted with life a little bit, ebbed and flowed a little bit like this, um, the apathy that really wasn't a big deal has now turned into what? Yeah, it's like his wife, not sure about this. And really, it used to upset me when you did stuff. It doesn't really upset me anymore. That's not a good thing, right? And so he's on the brink of divorce. Well, the, the handful of meetings every once in a while that he missed and the cold calls that he didn't make because he wasn't as hungry as the young guys that were there has led to where where's he at on the rank as far as production? He's down low again, which means his job is on the line. And if his, his, his income is based on like a $50,000 income uh, and it's for production, guess what happened to his income level? It's gone down. Do you think that helped the marriage or hurt the marriage? Hurt the marriage. There's more stress at home. How'd that go with his 2.5 kids? Not that his relationship's based on money, but he's not okay because men, don't we often as guys, we actually put our self-worth on how we're providing for our family. So that's down too. Now that just 125 calories, and again, I don't want to uh, promote counting calories, but just a little bit of calories extra a day over 27 months, he's gained 33.5 pounds. Got that? Now that 33.5 pounds, the stress of everything, and now he's in a full-blown, you can't get any more heart attack risk. And the stress and the weight gain has led himself to actually probably most likely developing a neoplasma cancer somewhere he doesn't know. The 2009 recession that we saw, uh, by all statistical probability, increased the amount of cancer diagnosis by 260,000 people. And you have not seen anything that this COVID has caused like we're about to see. So this is the third guy. Now let's go to the first guy. The guy just read, he picked up a little magazine on success. Got it? So what does that look like for his life? What did, it, what did he actually do? Well, those 10 pages a day... Just five days a week, because let's not do it on the weekend. Too much self-help. We don't do that. But he actually read 47 books, right? Now, the average person after college doesn't read three books in their entire lifetime. But just the short amount of time that he spends in his car has added up to 465 hours of inspiring and instructional content to be better as a human being, husband, business person, real estate person, okay? The, the, the 125 calories that he cut out daily has actually caused him to lose 33.5 pounds. Dr. Oz actually went on record and said if, if every American right now just cut out 125 calories out of your diet, we'd eliminate uh, American obesity literally in the next decade. That's what he said. Uh, and then watch this. The, the parking lot that he actually walked further instead of parking close, he added 900 miles over 27 months. And that's, it wasn't that long a distance, okay? Some of you guys are like, I'm not walking five miles to work. No, 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 parking lot. But those 900 miles decreased his gaining, thir- so he lost 33.5. It decreased his gaining another 30 pounds on top of that. You guys with me? And those 128 date nights that he had, Let's just say that he could have 3.5 or 4.5 children. (laughs) Doing pretty good. Kids watching at home. Just move on to the next one. (laughs) But those two extra prospecting calls, just two extra calls, right? 
ended up being 1,860 prospect calls for his personal business. And even if he wasn't very good and learned nothing in all the self-help and the, all the stuff he listened to, if he just closed 3% of the people that he called, that's an extra $279,000 into his income, right? Which actually also helped his date night and the opportunity to have more children. <laughs> what is my point in saying all that? My point in saying that is what? My point in saying that is small... Seemingly what? Insignificant actions make what? A big, big change. The reason that we're going to take some serious action steps today that are more than just small ones is because you guys ran in and your hope tank was pretty close to empty. And what I need you to get is some hope again. Guess what some of the most hopeful things are? If you're trying to lose weight and you step back on the scale and you've lost one to three pounds, how's that feel? And if you did that again within a week and you actually lost more weight, how would that feel? So the Bible says that hope deferred makes a heart what? Sick. Sick. But a hope fulfilled is a tree of life. What is a tree of life? It gives me shelter from all this craziness that's going on. It actually gives me something that has roots in the ground to hold on to in a storm. And it's, it's giving me something that I can feed myself with so that I continually get better and grow. Got it? That's a tree of life. Everybody with me on that? Yeah. Got it? I could preach on that one, but I'm going to leave that alone for now. But the point is, the long-term consequences have amazing effects. And the long, this is not 27 months of results, is it? This is a lifetime. Those people are the same age. Got it? So that's 80. Guess which one my mom looks like? Yeah. Guess how many people I see on the left, or the right, I should say? The majority. Which one does the, does the uh, society at large think is, is normal? Right. It's not normal, it's common. Right? Who wants to be uncommon? Are you ready for that? So let me give you this. I got one more point. Okay? Success does not look like this. Okay? Just doesn't. You've got to increase your intestinal fortitude and the sinew of your character so that when you do get on the scale or whatever it is you're measuring, because you said what measure what matters, right? Whatever it is your measurement is, as soon as you actually don't get what you want or they close your gym, heaven forbid, guess what you have to do? You have to stand up on the inside, take a left or a right, and wherever it takes you, just keep what? Just keep going. going. Got it? Let me tell you a little story. God cannot steer a boat sitting still, and he cannot guide a plane that's not moving as well. If if you go the 180 degree wrong direction in your life, but you're moving, guess what God can do? Turn it around as long as you're moving. Don't get stuck. And if you get stuck, this is why coaching helps out. Everybody with me? But I want to just tell you this. this. This picture is about hope. All of these people, they worked the system, they invested the time, and they problem solved along the way. And the reason that we created this slide is because I wanted you to see you're not by yourself. And many of you guys are those slides. And the reason that's so powerful is because you're not ever by yourself. God said, I would never leave you or forsake you. And guess, just so you know, when you showed up today, Jesus showed up. Because for most of you guys, he lives inside of you. And at the end of the day, you're never alone. Which is why it's so important for us, for you guys to link arms together and know that guess what? This is what it looks like to work the system, invest the time, problem solve along the way, and have your hope continually build. You guys see that? Is this powerful? Man, and guess what? The world's not talking about this. The world's talking about what drug you should have and hoping for a vaccine to come out. And at the end of the day, guess what you need? The world, what the world, this sounds so corny, but what the world needs now is love and grace and mercy more than it ever has before. Okay, thanks for coming, everybody. It's awesome. It's all you needed. It's all you needed. Last but not least, okay, I am going to preach just for a second. Could you just... Give me a little bit of grace on this one. So in Acts 27, Paul is on his way to Rome, uh, always wanted to go to Rome. Sometimes we don't get to pick what that journey looks like. And he actually is getting to Rome in, in handcuffs and shackles in a boat. Um, but here's the thing. In verse 20, they went ahead and went instead of listening to the Holy Spirit, what he told Paul to stay in the harbor. And they, first of all, do you guys know this? You can't control the storms that come into your life. But you can also keep the second storm that you create by your reactions from the first one from coming. 
right? Some of you guys dealing with depression uh, ended up self-medicating with wine in your room by yourself at night uh, or food to comfort you. Uh, or it could be exercise. You went on went completely that direction. You exercised yourself sick. You know, you guys self-medicate. But here's the thing. Don't create a second storm by your reaction to the first one. That's the first thing. That's a writer down. That's a writer down. The second thing is, in verse 20, the sailors on the boat, they said they had lost all hope when for days they didn't see the sun or the stars. I never even got that until Stephen Furtick preached his message on staying power. And what I saw in that is that if you know anything about nautical, how to sail a ship, right, is you have to sail it guided by the sun during the day and what by night? The stars. So what happened is, as they got further and further along in this not being able to be guided by something, they lost all hope. Listen, you get enough seasons, you get enough days or weeks into a crisis, COVID or riots or whatever else, and you lose what you're guided by, all of a sudden you'll start losing hope and then you'll start what? Resisting the system, you know, re, you know, resenting the time, pro, just complaining, complaining, complaining. And the bottom line is it's because you're losing hope. And what you need to know is this. What you go through doesn't determine where you end up. What you're guided by determines where you end up. That's a writer downer. And what you want to be guided by is truth. You don't want to be guided by your emotions, which can be ramped up by just two seconds on your Facebook feed or a water cooler talk. You want to be guided by the truth. Now, I could, I could talk about this truth and I could talk about the truth that she's going to talk about, which is just the science of how your body's literally created to use all the nutrition and all the rest. But at the end of the day, that's also why it's so important to stay connected. That's why we do GNN. Who's on GNN? Any of my GNNers? Can I get a whoop whoop GNN? See ya. So GNN, I started seeing that so many people were just upset and they were emotionally tired. And so I started doing something uh, on our private Facebook group. So you can't just jump on there. You have to apply to be... Some of you guys will get accepted. <laughs> but you just get on there, and then it's like 15 to 30 minutes. I try to keep it real short. But you get a lot of good news, just fun stuff from Herb Life, and then uh, from National News. Uh, I have the Colette meter for weather. And then, because um, it doesn't take much to get her cold. That's why she's got T-shirts over her legs. But at the end, you're going to get some the good news. Got it? Do you think your life might be a little bit better if you had a constant drip of positivity? Right? That's what it is. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest if you're not on that, I want everybody to be part of that. Okay? Sound good? You good? So are you guys really ready to get into the meat? Okay, so what I want you to do is I need you to self-identify with a person who can do the things that she's going to teach. And as soon as you feel like, Mm-mm, no, that's not going to work or that's going to be too hard, guess what I want you to do? Let yourself relax. Know the only reason you feel that way is because you came in what? A little bit tired. You came in a little bit tired. And listen, as you self-identify and start working the system, investing the in problem solving, guess what's going to happen to your hope? It's going to be good. Can I get an amen? Awesome. Dr. Kimberly Herb, everybody. It's been a riot at my house for the past three months. Let me just tell you that right there. That man. So you're going to love me right now because I'm about to give you some more goodies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So our team actually, in fact, I think a shout out for Rebecca uh, Googler. Shout out for Rebecca. Everybody, everybody give her a round of applause. So Rebecca is a phenomenal cook. I'm just going to say that. Phenomenal cook. And you're about to get some yummies. So we're going to pass those around, and I'm going to kind of get us started um, while we got to get a little snack. And I want to tell you, we're going to hit the first part of the puzzle piece, and it's going to be the nutrition puzzle piece. But how many of you guys remember um, doing this in college? Anybody? Was it only me that dealt with the freshman 15? Freshman 30, I had a few freshman 30s. Well, I have one that's about to go to college, so we're having a lot of conversations about that right now. And I have one that's in college, and he already went through the freshman 15, and now he's found his way back to um, 
normal C again. Am I in a better spot? I'm trying to find the right spot. Right spot? Oh, here. That's a good spot. Up forward? Okay. It's a little exercise thing. So, um, was it uh, the pizza? Who was it? Pizza? Anybody? Was it pizza during the freshman 15? Pizza. My my place was right next to McDonald's. I'm sorry to tell you. I did work at Burger King at one time. So, yeah, so we um, we did the pizza. We did the um, double stacked burgers like that, right? So there was a lot of that going on. And then maybe a little alcohol. I'll just be honest. And nobody, is it only me? Only me, right? Just a little bit of alcohol. And let's see, um, cookie dough runs at night. Anybody else do that? We had cookie dough on our ceilings because we ended up throwing it at each other. So that was some of the things. And what about the all too famous ramen noodles. Anybody? Who, I mean, what it was like 10 for a dollar, I think, when I was in school. I don't know what it is right now, but like, right? So I did it too. Doesn't this quarantine feel like the freshman 15? Doesn't it? Like, you don't put your sweat, you don't take your sweats off unless you absolutely have to, right? You don't put makeup on unless you know there's a cute guy going to the little, like, the cafeteria, right? Like, I mean, it's, I mean, you don't take a shower. That's kind of bad, too. (laughs) So, right? So then we end up feeling like this, right? The freshman 15, we can't get out of bed. We're like, oh, our joints hurt. Everything hurts. You can't do your pants up. Has anybody else struggled with that? I know there's a few of you that have done phenomenal But when I talked about doing this event with my team and we were coming up with a title for this, I said, do you guys remember the freshman 15 and my whole staff like raised their hands. (laughs) They're like, oh my gosh, we've all gained weight, right? So, but we problem solved along the way and I think we've kind of got back in our pants again, right? And so this is a lot of times what a lot of us are feeling is this, this joint just the body, the pants, everything. And this, I'm just done. Are you guys done with this? Yeah. You might join me and you're done with this process. I'm done with it too. What I want to do today is I want to give you the what, when, why, how, why, you know, all that stuff and kind of walk you through a little bit more of a step-by-step so that you have um, something you can walk away in a wheelbarrow to kind of know what to do. And so as you're eating and kind of chomp on yourself, how does it taste, by the way? Okay, let me just say, can you believe that you can actually lose weight and eat fat bombs? You're welcome. Everybody everybody needs to get, and it's 0.8 to 1 net carbs. Depends on how big Rebecca made them. Rebecca told me 0.8. She knows how to, I mean, she's got it nailed down right there. So how many net carbs you can have a day? Everybody needs to give Rebecca a hug on the way out. That's all I got to say. Um, phenomenal job on all that. So what, when, why, how? <laughs> Sometimes we're looking at it like a big math equation. Like my son's in Calc 2 right now, and he's just looking at these. He sent me like four pieces of paper of one problem. I was like, son, I really want you to show me how to do this one day, but not now. <laughs> Like, this is just too much. Sometimes, like, going through your nutrition can feel like a calc problem, right? Like, oh, what do I buy? What do I eat? But if it's okay for you to eat the stuff that you're eating right now, wouldn't that be cool? Right? Eating some chia seed pudding, eating some fat bombs. I see some happy faces now. Yeah. Okay, you'll last until I feed you your salad here in a minute, okay? That's the, go- that's the goal. So let's do the first in our little what, when, why, how, where kind of question. And let's hit when. This is the easiest one, okay? How many of you know what intermittent fasting is? How many of you are doing intermittent fasting or have done it? Okay. So guess what? When is super easy and you started today, you're welcome. You all started at 11. So your window of eating was 11 today. If we eat in eight hours, because that's what intermittent fasting is about, you pick a time frame, 
and the most popular and probably um, easier to do time frame would be eight hours, okay? So that would mean 11 to 7, okay, would be your window today. So the idea is that you finish eating three hours before you go to bed. So if you go to bed at 10, now if you're going to bed at midnight, no, 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 that's not going to work. But you get my idea. Like you, if you go to bed, if you're going to bed at nine, then you need to back it up a little bit and stop eating so that you stop eating at six. So your window needs to be about eight hours. Um, if you do six, seven, that's fine. If you do nine, that's okay. Try to get it in that window time frame. So when, what are the benefits of it? It totally helps reset your hormones. Totally helps reset your insulin and boost your growth hormone. Like it's a phenomenal window. It's, it's, a, and it's not a diet. It's actually just a pattern of eating. And it's actually probably more so how people ate in biblical times because we didn't have, you know, food wasn't so readily available. You had to work at eating a meal. So it's more like what people did in biblical times. So that pattern of eating, intermittent fasting, that's a phenomenal way to actually begin answering the questions of the when, what, why, how. Okay, so when, 11 to 7. In my family, my husband and I do 7, and we do until about 1 every day. So we're like a 6-hour window. So we'll start eating at 7. We do our workout in the morning. We do our, our, our Bible time, and then we get ready, and then we start. Okay, so that does not fit the, the majority of people because you want usually people want to eat dinner with their family. So you try to find that window and figure out what works for you. And that's why that window of like 11 to 7 seems to work for most people. Okay, so you can have your lunch and you can have your, your dinner and then your snacks along the way. So when? Now, the percentages you'll see up there, keto advanced, maximizing your results with a workout. We're going to talk about how to work out for your body type today. So we're going to do some new things um, in, in here today. And I wanted to kind of feed you so that you can stay you know, focused and happy um, while we're doing that. <laughs> so let's hit a couple things, the feeding window and fasting window, and then uh, fe- fasting, feeding, fasting. So in your fasting window, you don't eat anything. You can drink, and you can also drink coffee, but you can't put what in it? Cream, Cream or butter or any of that. So the bulletproof coffee breaks your fast because it has butter in it, right? And MCT oil, right? So you want to make sure that you don't break, you break your fast when you have things like fats in it, okay? So you can have coffee as long as it's black and you don't put any cream in it, okay? You'll still be in your fasting window. So that's the fasting window. And you can then move into your feeding window, and that's really when you're going to want to eat all of your food and you're going to want to hit your percentages. So the percentages of fat that you consume in one day, the percentage of protein you consume in one day, the percentage of carbs you consume in one day. I'm going to break that down for you. I'm going to actually give you a whole lot. This is just kind of more so just for you understanding the windows. Then you're going back to the fasting window. So when I go to bed at night, if you guys finish at 7 today, then from 7 until the time you wake up until 11 the next day, you're in a now fasting window. So in the evening time, if you want to drink herbal teas, put stevia in it, that kind of stuff, that's fine. Just make sure there's nothing that's got, like, butter, cream, like, anything that's heavy that's going to create a digestive process. Everybody good with that? Yes? Okay. Now, you may not be good with doing it just yet, but just does it it make sense? Very good. Okay, good. All right, good. All right, so that's the when of what we're going to do. So I would suggest that you maybe take your paper that you have and write down what your when is. Like, what is your when window? What works good for you? If you're here with your spouse, you know, your when window for the two of you. So our when window, my husband and I do seven to one. I guarantee you probably none of you will do that, but that is our window. One thing that I love, and the reason why you want to stop eating three hours before bed at night is because when you go to sleep at night, that's when your nerve system speeds up. That's when you heal. And so if you take the blood from your nerve system and you put it in your gut, then you're taking it away from your body's ability to heal. So you want to make sure you don't have food on your belly late at night like that and you're done eating at least three hours before bed. Okay? Good? All right. The next one is going to be the why. So why? Well, we want to be fat-melting machines, right? We want to be burning fat all the time. So the why has to do with our hormones. Like what can we do to help boost our hormones. Are you good? Can virtual see? Good? Okay. 
So the why is all about helping, helping boost your hormones so that your body can be doing this on its own. So if you pick that window that we talked about and you do it consistently, by the end of three, four weeks, five weeks, you're going to notice your blood sugar levels are stable. You're going to notice your joints feel so much better. You're going to notice your pants feel looser. You're going to feel more focused and clear-headed. And that's really because you're resetting your insulin, which is your fat hormone. You're resetting your ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone. You're resetting your leptin. Leptin is that hormone that tells your brain, I'm full. I'm done. I don't need to eat anymore. How many of you would like somebody to tell you that you are full? (laughs) That's making sure your body works right to do that, okay? Your cortisol levels. Like how many, I mean, our cortisol levels are insane right now, right? Just like Dr. David said, it, like, you gotta throw your phone down, get off that social media, cause it'll just, and turn the TV off for sure, like just leave it off, right? Just turn praise music on and walk around your house and pray and pray and, and, and praise Jesus. Like that would be the most productive thing for all of us. And so, cortisol, what, when you stimulate your cortisol and it's just being hammered constantly, all that does is actually cause you to just gain weight right around the middle. So for those of you who feel like you've got fat rolling over the sides that you didn't have before, it's likely because of the cortisol. So we've got to find ways to decrease that cortisol that we keep, keeps hitting us constantly. And so that's part of problem solving along the way. If you recognize that you are freaked out and anxious all the time, then you got to look at what you're looking at, who you're listening to. And again, that's why we started GNN. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I've had to be in the Word three times a day. I have to get in state before I come to work. I have to get in state when I'm done with my shift before I go back for the afternoon shift. And then at night, praise God, we got GNN, and I can, like, go to bed because it's just this constant drip. Like, it's like we're all hooked up to an IV of just negativity, right? And so you've got to, like... Just look around in your environment, and the part you can control, control the part you can. You can't control everything, but control the parts that you can. That's boosting your cortisol. And then the human growth hormone, just doing intermittent fasting will help reset your human growth growth hormone, but then that exercise piece that we're going to dial in, that helps that too. And then estrogen, all the xenoestrogens. You guys heard the term xenoestrogen? He says xenoestrogen. Xenoestrogen is what's in all of the hand sanitizers that they've been forcing everybody to use. It's in all the bleach wipes that everybody's forcing you to use. And you put your food on the countertop and then you got bleach in your food, and right? It's in all that stuff. And for even those of us who are trying to like stay away from it, it's we're getting it too. So it's in all that stuff. So we gotta really watch that. And we wanna become, why we wanna become fat melting machines. The other thing is the benefits of the things that we're gonna teach about today. One of them is going to be advanced and keto. I'm going to break advanced and keto. We do a couple eating plans. One's a core plan, one's advanced plan slash keto plan. So we're going to show you a couple different eating plans. And today, you are all going to commit. Yes? Everybody shake your head. You're going to make a commitment to something. One of those things you're going to choose. You're going to write it down. And then what we're going to do is we're all going to connect on the Good News Network on Herb Family Friends. We're going to start taking pictures of our food. We're going to show the world. I mean, our group here, our tribe. And we're just going to hold each other accountable. Okay? And that way we feel the community aspect of it. So when we do things like the plans we're talking about, so I'm going to sell you on it right now. Cool? I mean, what? It decreases your risk of cancer. What is the one food that we actually eat that makes more cancer cells? Sugar. Sugar. So we know it here, right? But we've got to make it in the core of us, right? So sugar and anything that turns to sugar. Well, what turns to sugar? What is your favorite thing that turns to sugar? (laughs) All right, so you said it. I didn't. Well, so weight loss boost is another big one. Heart health, that's the number one. Next to medications killing us, that's the number one cause of death is heart disease. So this is a big, huge improvement. Skin improvements, brain function, and reduced blood sugar. So let's get into the what. What are the plans? What? So has everybody, who has not heard of advanced plan? I want you to raise your hand so I can walk you through, okay? So for the rest of us, we'll, we'll interact about it, and we're going to make sure all the rest of the people in here can hear about it, learn it, and decide to 
um, make it a core concept, right? And then we can walk through the system as well. So if you have any indications on this chart, this is what helps you decide whether you need to follow something like the plan I just talked to you about. And I'm going to tell you what it is in a minute. So you have first make you walk to the edge of the cliff, and then you have to jump in, and then I'll tell you what you're jumping into. <laughs> I'm a mom. I have three kids. You know, that's not really liver on your plate. Steak. That's what my mom said. Um, so what is it? Advanced plans. Indications you might need it. If you have and you know you've been tested for, you have high triglycerides, then advanced plan is the right plan for you because it helps you to heal those triglycerides. Okay? So if you know you have that, then boom, right away, we know that this is the right plan. Right? If you are having high cholesterol, um, maybe your doctor told you you should take it, um, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, or maybe low blood sugar, insulin and leptin, that's really in the sugar and in um, blood and heart stuff department. If you have any of those things, then advanced plan is the plan for you. And you saw all the testimonies, right? You saw that 50 plus testimonies that we ran through. These are all people that didn't do this stuff perfectly, but they actually made a commitment. They actually worked the system, invested the time, and they problem solved along the way. And that's for all of us. So if you have any of those things, then advanced plan or the keto type Advanced plan is what we're looking for for you guys, okay? Inflammatory disease, arthritis, and allergies. That can be a large number, like any type of arthritis. So we're talking rheumatoid, psoriatic. There's a ton of different, you know, types of arthritis, right? So any of them. And inflammatory disease is actually a fancy term a lot of doctors are using now. You have inflammation, you have inflammation. And so just kind of, kind of stay right in that realm if there's a label that you've kind of heard it's an inflammatory disease. If you're on the spectrum or have had cancer, I'll just say if you have had cancer or you currently have cancer, then this becomes your new eating plan for the rest of your life. Because once you've had cancer, you never want to feed cancer again, right? And if you don't ever want to get it and you're concerned that there's maybe some people in your family and it's just like a high level for you, and this is a great plan for you just to make sure you're doing some things to make sure you don't get it, okay? The next thing would be energy, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, heart disease, digestive dysfunction. When I say digestive dysfunction, how many of you watched Pooptastic, the webinar? Good. So I just did a webinar. If you want more on digestion, I did a webinar called Pooptastic. My husband named it. He gets credit for that one. It's kind of a funny name, Pooptastic. And so everything that you ever wanted to know about how to make your poop fantastic, pooptastic. There you go. So anything you can think of, like ulcerative colitis. We've had, we have a, a patient in our office that she came in, and she, I feel like she was around 70 pounds. And when she came in for the first time, she had ulcerative colitis. And um, taking medications, one of the pills she took every day was like $1,000 for one pill. And so she was on the toilet over 30 times every day. And we walked her through getting her spine corrected, going through all the things that we're teaching. And now, I mean, I, she's got some phenomenal testimony. But now she's like 100, I think she's like 115 pounds, just totally normal body size. And no longer having, ulcerative colitis is gone, like completely gone. So he's good, right? He's good. So anything in that category, obesity, grain issues, focus problems, maybe in the ADD, ADHD realm, a mental, emotional disorders, and then medications. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang out here for just a second. So ADD, ADHD, mental and emotional disorders. If you're having trouble focusing or you have children that have trouble focusing, it's really not a good idea to give them what? Right, but we want to try to like appease them for a second, but it tends up, it ends up ricocheting back on you when you do that, doesn't it? Like you give them a little sugar because you want to give them a little treat. You want to be the nice grandma, mom, auntie, right? And then it ricochets back on you because then there's a meltdown later. Anybody else? Is it anybody else that has, sees that meltdown later? I melt down later when I do that. So we want to just be aware, like sometimes the thing that you're doing because you're following your emotions to try to like give people things that you think they might like or maybe they like you is not really the best plan. So be careful with that. I I really, it drives me crazy to see classrooms where teachers are bribing their kids to answer questions with candy. You know, like 
let's find something else to give them, you know, rather than poisoning them and making them think that they've got to, you know, get food every time they do something right. So, and then medications. If you're a person that's been on medications or you um, are, are working your way through some medications or your doctor told you to be on them, if you're on medications, this is the plan because if you ever want or have a hope and a goal to get off of them, this is one of the steps that you'll do to do it successfully, which is evidenced by all the people you saw in the testimonies, yes? So, now here's the question. Here's the commitment. <laughs> How many of you already know which plan you need to be on? Okay. I need a high hand. All right, now I did not say whether you will do it or not. <laughs> I said, how many of you know which plan you should be on? Give it, be honest. Okay. Okay, if you know which plan you need to be on, right, then you take your little book I told you about and you just write over the top. And then you think about how to get this core, get it in your core, work the system, invest the time, and problem solve along the way. You won't do it perfect. You won't. But you have a community, a tribe here, actually, to help you and encourage you and be right there with you. All right, so let me tell you what it is. Because you already committed, now i got to tell you what it is, right? <laughs> so, okay, the first thing that everyone's already, you already said it, that we need to stay away from is what? So, well, grains, because that's the thing that usually people have the hardest time giving up. So I'm talking, what, I'm, what do I mean by grains? Give me some grains that you love. Oatmeal. Okay, oatmeal. Rice. That's a grain, y'all. Rice. Rice, that's a grain. Pasta. Cereal, pasta, corn, corn. corn. what else? Bread, bagels, croissants, donuts. donuts. All right, I think we're all feeling good now, right? We got it out of our system. Let me give you a couple solutions because what you'll find, also Brenna here is another phenomenal cook. Everybody wave at Brenna. Okay. So she will show you exercises and she'll show you, she's actually in her kitchen usually with her son and they're cooking and he's eating half of it and it's all over his face and, but the, she'll show you a whole lot of stuff as it pertains to cooking. And so some of the things that you'll find when you, when I, when I tell you no grains, well, if you like rice, you can do what kind of rice instead? Cauliflower, Cauliflower rice. And you can make it so it actually tastes good. That might be a good recipe, Brenna, for you to do for all of us to show us how to do cauliflower rice. Um, what about tortillas? What kind of tortillas can you have instead? Siete is a brand, and it's almond or corn, right? You can have the flour, ba that non-flour, but it's actually a, like a nut base for many of them, um, almond and coconut nuts. So you can have tortillas. And so I'm giving you back stuff that you love, but I'm giving it to in a way that's good for your body, Okay. What else can we do that's a grain? Um, we said, um, somebody said cereal. What could you do in place of cereal? Like grainless granola. That's right. You could, you could mix up, which is a recipe that we have. This is one of the, Rebecca's favorites. She used to make grainless granola for cereal because she loves cereal. And so you can make a batch of grainless granola and keep it in your house and then just eat off that. And put some coconut milk in there, unsweetened almond milk, and that could be your cereal. So I'm giving you a couple things back. Okay, you should say thank, thank you, you. <laughs> and still like me because I gave you fat bombs. Um, okay, and then the percentage. So pay attention to these percentages because I'm going to show you how they make sense later. So write down the percentages. So advanced plate is 65% fat. That means your plate, the, the meals that you have, needs to be consumed with or, or full of 65% good fats. We're staying away from damaged fats. Give me what a damaged fat is. Canola oil. Vegetable oil, sunflower, safflower. Safflower, sunflower, what else? Peanut, Peanut oil, what else? Margin. Who, who had the, um, um, the can under the sink? The, the, the coffee can under the sink? Was it just me? Right? This I cooked when I was growing up. I thought it was really good. My mom put that can under the buds didn't want it but man that can stayed forever underneath there <laughs> so we'd make french fries and all kind of stuff and nearly burn the house down a few times but that has what in it has has like has all the bad stuff in it the reason why nobody wants it is because it's nasty right 
So that's the stuff we want to stay away from. The, the Crisco, I think is what it was. The Crisco? Yeah. yeah. So that's a bad fat. Naturally raised animals. So what is naturally raised? Grass fed. Organic. Free range. You guys are educated here. This is some good stuff. Okay. So for those of you who are my guests, is this helpful? Okay, good. All right. And then 10% low sugar fruits and veggies. What are the low sugar fruits and veggies? Give me the fr- fruits first. So we said berries. Any berries, not cherries. There's a big sad face for me. That is my favorite fruit, I will say. Okay, so berries and what other thing? Granny Smith apples. The thing is, is you're not going to want to eat a whole bunch of Granny Smith apples. I mean, let's be honest, right? But if you cut a watermelon, how many of us can eat like half of it? It's because of the sugar, right? So you're choosing fruits that are low in sugar. Now let's choose our veggies. Which veggies are low in sugar? Let me ask it a different way. Which ones are high in sugar? Okay, so potatoes, which is the one that we love the most, right? Potatoes are the highest in sugar. Any in sweet potatoes are included. I'm so sorry. Okay, so sweet potatoes and potatoes, and then corn, yes, and then carrots, yes. And those are the three that are highest, and really, you can have the rest of them. Your biggest thing you've got to stay away from is the potatoes. Like all that bit right there, like that's the one you got to really make sure you stay away from that one, okay? That's because it's a higher glycemic. Now, why? Why? Why did I say all that? Because this is what we're trying to heal. So let's go back to what, okay? And then we'll do the action steps to kind of like, what am I eating, right? What, what, what does this look like? We wish to know why. And make sure you've got that list so you know in front of you, like, wh- when you write down that you're choosing advanced plan, like, what was the reason why you chose it? Was it because you're on a medication you're trying to get off? Was it because you're trying to lose weight? Was it because that you have emotional imbalances and you just want to, like, punch the wall or punch someone else or you don't want to get out of bed? Like, if that's whatever it is, like, that's going to be the, the reason that anchors you to reminds you why you're doing it, okay? So core plan is really the plan for those who either kept their hands down or didn't tell the truth. <laughs> Okay, so, no, core plan is actually my daughter, Zanae, would be a good example of that. So she's on core plan right now. And so she didn't have anything on that list. So she didn't have anything on that list, then we can actually have things like the whole grains and ancient grains, and you can have a variety, all the fruits and vegetables that you want. So if you heal all the things on this list here, then you can switch to this one once you get your goal. Unless you have a diagnosis, okay, like a, like a cancer diagnosis. Is that fair? Good? Okay. So that's really the goal. That's really the plan. Now, what's the difference between the keto and advanced? How many of you have ever done keto? Raise your hand. Okay. So keto, there's some, there's some ways you can do keto that kind of look like the stuff on the right, and it's still keto, yeah? That's called dirty keto. <laughs> Dirty keto. Dirty, dirty, dirty. So I'm kind of telling you to do advanced keto. Advanced plan keto. Make sense? Because we want to, you can actually eat french fries and all this fat that's just lard and all the bad fats we talked about fried. You can do pork rinds. I have someone who loves pork rinds and eats them every day. And so you do that kind of stuff. You're still keto, right? But you're doing a dirty style of keto, right? You're doing the, the dirty style. So you'll be lighter, but you might die earlier. <laughs> We're not going for that one, okay? So we don't end up developing heart disease in the process of following a diet like that because then it's silly, right? It's not, it doesn't really get where we want to go. So we want to make sure we're eating all the good fats and we're staying away from the bad stuff. So write these percentages down because you're going to use these percentages to load in the, into a program I teach you how to use in just a second. So if you're going to follow advanced plan, advanced plan is really something that you can actually do that's good for everybody all the time. You can follow advanced plan all the time. Keto on this side right here, 
keto is a little harder to stay in. You're not going to necessarily stay in it all the time, but you might ebb and flow. You might go keto, advanced plan, core plan. You might ebb and flow depending upon the goal that you have. And keto is a little harder to stay in. So you're looking to try to get into ketosis. And there's a couple different ways you can measure that. You can best way is to measure that with your finger prick. And, and there's a little ketone meter that you put the, the, the um, strips in, kind of like glucose, checking your glucose. Same thing. So if you want to get real strict like that, you can do that with the with the, um, being on the keto diet or just following the advanced plan. So see that see the percentages are just kind of a subtle difference, but it's one's a lot more practical every day. Okay, everybody got the percentages? Okay, no. Okay, go back. Keto is the more strict one on the left. So 60 to 75 percent. 20 to 30 and 5% carbs. So you're literally like not having any fruit whatsoever when you're doing this. Okay. And I'm going to show you a way to track this because this is what, how we want it. How do, how do I know if I'm doing keto or not? Well, I'll show you how to track this in just a second. Everybody good? Go ahead. You want to take a picture? Fine. Okay. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. She's keeping me on time. Good? Yeah, let's wait because we're going to have a time for questions. Yeah. Because she just put a timer on me and now I'm really in trouble. <laughs> okay. So the other thing is that I want to show you guys. So in this point right here, we're going to actually show you how to do the quarantine 15 reset bundle. I'm going to hit you, show you how to, this is another kind of the one of the what's. So what am I eating and then what am I consuming? Like what are the foods that I'm consuming? So the quarantine reset bundle, we actually had that at the last makeover where we had a lot of people get started and it was like a 90 day reset and we only got 30 days into it. So we kind of got robbed. So I want to just tell you what that kind of what's on here. So what you'll see is this pure, this pure path protein and the protein, we chose this because it's only got three net carbs in it. So one actual serving of it, one smoothie a day will give you three net carbs. So when you try to start, I'll show you how to figure out your net carbs. And when you start figuring that out, that's a big deal. So you can have one whole meal, and it's only three net carbs in there. So this is chocolate and vanilla. Then we also have what we what we call the metabolics burn, and that's another component to it. But when inside, let me let me back up for a second. Inside the smoothie, you can put your MCT oil in the smoothie. So you just take the serving of it, and you just put it inside the smoothie. And that helps you keep your fats up. MCT oil helps to keep the fats up. Then your electrolytes, that's going to be for people who, when they go off sugar and they take the grains out, you can get what they call the keto flu. You guys have ever seen the, heard of the keto flu? That's where you feel like, oh my gosh, I have a headache. I feel nauseous. I feel queasy. And that's that process that you go through withdrawals. And so you can literally just take... Um, a half a teaspoon of that and put it in 20 ounces of water and take a shot of it. I had a patient tell me right after she did this, she went home and the first weekend she started to feel bad and she did one shot of that and immediately the headache went away. It's an electrical and it's like an electrical, the electrolytes are being balanced. So what you do is you take a teaspoon of the electrolytes here, half teaspoon, put in a little bit of water and drink it. And I will tell you, you're going to see it in the back when you pick, if you pick up the bundle. But when you, when you do this, it actually helps to balance things out. It helps you with the keto flu or some of the symptoms of withdrawals that you get from that. Okay. Now, did you guys look in your goodie bag? Y'all got one of these. So if you didn't see this, mm, mm, these are good right there. Okay. Super good. So, and then the metabolic burn, the piece with the metabolic burn, that's a phenomenal piece that will actually help you to, um, it's got all the adaptogenic herbs in it. It helps speed up your metabolism, and it's an appetite suppressant. So those are this is like our bundle that we brought back that's actually given people a lot of really great results. Again, that's part of the action steps to kind of get us where we want to go. We'll do a little more deep, deep dive in a little bit. How? How this little, if you want to take your phone, you can actually look for that little M symbol in your app store. And I'm going to show you what it looks like when you go into the app store. This will be the way that you can track your stuff at home. So what you do is you get the app on your phone, and you set it up, and Brenda's going to post after this so you can see the video real-time at home. For those of you who are like me, like not super like savvy, 
you can watch the video and just kind of stop it and start it so you can kind of go through the steps of it. But the big picture behind this is this actually gives you an app that you can plug in those percentages, 65% fat, 25% protein, 10% carbs, and then your goals, and then it automatically tells you how many carbs you can have. So then when you take your phone and you scan the food, like you scan the bar, it'll pop up and immediately fill out a little pie chart that shows you how much carbs, how much fat. It's brilliant. Rebecca is the one that got me turned on to this app, and it's free, free app. So there are some upgrades you can do. I think you can pay a dollar or pay something for it, but just get the free app. You don't need all, you don't need to pay for anything. It's a free app you can do on your phone. Really good way to track it. Now look at, kind of watch the app. You can kind of see how you can find it on there. Just for those of you who are like me, not maybe not as savvy, you can kind of see this is what it looks like. You're going to put in your, your information. You can even track your workouts on here, too, which is awesome because as soon as you see your total net calories and you put in your workout, it deducts. It's like, yeah, awesome. And you can link your watch to it. And I think it even, Shannon told me you can even take a picture of your plate, which is cool. So see, you're working, you're putting your workout in, like, how's your, are you sedentary? See, this is where you put in your met metrics. So it's got your net carbs, your protein, and your fat. You decide, you load it ahead of time, and then it tells you if you're in range or not. So if you eat that one meal, you're like, uh-oh, I only have this many carbs later today. You can kind of see where you're at in your pie chart. It's really awesome. So Brenna did that. High five to Brenna. I mean, how, right? Awesome. <laughs> Brenna did that. The creative flow has just been so cool. So cool. So this is kind of gives you a little picture of what it looks like. See, so you can scan the barcode on that. And this is the pie chart. So you can see how much fat you've had, protein, and carbs. This is what you want. You want it to look like the green is, like, really small, and the red is, like, really big. And then it shows you over here. You can track your water, your steps, and it, you scan all your food down here, and it gives you the total calories right there. So every day, and then you can see how you looked for, through the week and see if what you're doing is working. So it's just a brilliant way to do it. Now, this is for those of you who will not do that app. <laughs> Take a picture of this. Because you're going to want to make sure you know how to keep track of, like, your net carbs and that kind of stuff. So figuring out the formula. And Brenna will post this also. So make sure when you leave here that you're, you're connected on Herb Family Friends because all this stuff will be on Herb Family Friends. For those of us who need to repeat stuff and look at it several times, that's me. Um, she'll post that on there. So you want to figure out your net carbs, your dietary fiber, your sugar, alcohols, and then that gives you your total of net carbs a day. So you want to kind of stay within like a 20 to like, I don't know, like a 40 maybe range of net carbs a day to really be in that space where you're burning fat and you're actually dumping, dumping off weight and healing, okay? All right, and this is the fun stuff. Can you guys hang in there? I'm going to bring your food soon. Can you hang in there? This is going to, we're going to get some fun stuff. We're almost, we're kind of getting close, okay? We're getting close. Are you guys good? Okay. So body types. Real quick, I actually learned, let me grab you this, grab this book. So over 20 years ago, I actually studied in Houston with this lady. Her name's Dr. Dr. Dickie Fuller, and her company's Transformation Enzyme Corporation. So that's the enzymes that if you guys ever get digestive enzymes from here, this is the company that we use. And this book's called The Healing Power of Enzymes. And what she has in here is understanding your body type. So I learned over 20 years ago about how to do this awesome thing where you measure your body and that way you know what kind of foods you should be eating based upon your body type. And I used to, I had a machine where I would take your saliva, your urine, and your blood and I'd spin it in the, in the office and I can see what you didn't digest. And that told me what your body type was. And then we learned about how to measure it so we didn't have to do all that. And so that's what we do now. So I wanted to introduce it to you guys. This is just some really exciting things. But this is actually for people who are like, oh, I don't know about advanced plan, oh. Or you're doing advanced plan, and you're like, I just need it, need something to kind of help me fine-tune a little bit. Or you're struggling. This will give you a little something to kind of maybe a little more why direction of it. But there's four different body types. The first body type is the body type that you can kind of see in the picture. They gain weight evenly everywhere. Okay, everywhere. So if you put on weight, like you can't tell if it's 10 pounds, like it kind of goes everywhere. They gain weight evenly everywhere. 
Their butts are high and round, and they have even widths between their clavicles, like kind of measurements here between their hips and their clavicles. So it's just even there, those two measurements. That's going to be type 1. They crave carbs, like, forget it. Like, it's just put the list up there. They just crave carbs. And they actually have a, like, if they eat that way and they just give in to eating carbs all the time, they usually have skin issues. They usually have, like, a lot of, like, um, cold hands and feet. They're kind of, they can be moody, mood swings. And they can have issues with brain fog, hypoglycemia, things like that. Okay, so that's those. That's one body type. So body type one, okay? The second body type is going to be more like, I think, what do you call that when you're more narrow? Do they call that a pair? So your shoulders are more narrow and your hips are wider, okay? That's going to be body type two. You carry your weight um, in your hips and in your thighs. Your buttocks are low and flat and your clavicles more narrow than your hips. So that's kind of the measurement piece. They like foods that are flavorful. Chicken fried steak is probably a favorite. Like that's going to be one of the flavorful type things. And they usually have a history of like a lot of like, they can have like cysts and lumps and uh, menstrual issues. Um, They can also have prostate problems for men. Like those are issues that can kind of show up for them. Gallbladder problems is another big one. And so they have a hard, hard, hard time with that. The super body type is wider in their shoulders and more narrow in the hips. So that's kind of what they look like. They really, their butts are usually flat. Their wider shoulders, narrow in their hips. Their butts are usually flat. They carry their weight just basically up here, like including their face. Their face, their neck, it's like all right in this region, okay? And then their legs are just straight. That's the super body type. Body type three, they they create, they like the alcohol. They like the pork rinds. Like that's like... You bring on the pork rinds. So it's usually a lot of meat and salty type stuff. That's usually like your go-to would be that type of food. And then their history, they can have alcohol addiction issues, okay? They can also have issues with blood pressure, heart disease, and kidney problems. Kidney stones, that's kind of common with them, is they can throw a lot of kidney stones. I'm going to tell you why in just a second. Body type 4 is even. So it's like same shoulder, same same waist, same hits, like it's straight up and down right there. And they really kind of look the same, like their life. Like they just always look young, okay? And then there's not really a distinction, like I said, between the two measurements right there. They're usually soft. They carry weight evenly, and their bodies are soft. If their favorite food is cereal, forget it. Like just bring on the cereal and milk. Anything with milk and carbs, like that's their favorite food. They can eat it morning, noon, and night. Like that's their favorite food. And their past history, they can have a lot of digestive issues. They usually have immune problems. They can have a lot of digestive issues and a lot of chemical sensitivities. They get sick easier. That's kind of one of the things you can see with them when they have issues. So what are the foods they crave? Big picture, okay? So the paras, they crave sweets, but they need what? They need protein. So they think they can be vegetarians, but that is a disaster for their body type. It just is. They end up with yeast and all kinds of stuff because they need protein. So this person, just give them a, a meat stick and they'll be good. Like, I'm serious. Like, beef jerky, forget it. Like, they're done after that. But if you give them carbs all day long, they're going to end up with all those issues that we talked about. So the next one is uh, estro. So they crave spicy foods, foods that have flavor, but they need more fruits and vegetables and lean meats. So they're the ones that eat everything that is a flavorful food, that one, okay? And supras, they crave salt, meat, chocolate. Like that's basically, they can, they can eat a steak every day and they're good. Like that's, 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 <laughs> that's their, and they need a lot more fruits and veggies and lean meats, but they're not really drawn to the vegetable thing. So that's, that's them. And then type four, um, neuros, they crave milk, sugar, and dairy, so like cereal, just straight up cereal all day. They need a lot more protein too. So those are the different body types. And so I want to get into the last piece right here. Just write down what your body type is. I'm going to show you kind of how you can get measured if you want to, okay? Just write down what you think it is. Go back one. Write down your body type, what you think you are. And then if you decide you want to, okay, I think I'm good. Good. Type one is this part and this part's the same, and they do have a waist. Okay. That's type one. And four doesn't. Mm-hmm. Necessarily four doesn't. They're just boom, 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 straight up and down. 
They a couple of them have bellies, but yeah, you I mean you you can get a belly. One gains weight evenly everywhere, and Estro kind of gains it in their hips and their thighs, and then Supra gains it in their belly and like all the way up here. But if you're only gaining weight in your belly, it could be one of two. So then you just have to look at your bone structures. But we measure you. We can show you what that is. Just write down what you think. We'll know, we'll tell you what it is. Wait, wait. I want to see that. Raise your hand if you saw the new movie coming out. So there was a sneak preview of a movie that uh, I was in just recently called A Better Way. Uh, it was it was a they instead of doing like a red carpet preview and having they like, fly in people, but uh, uh, who was it? Um, Robert uh, F. Kennedy Jr. You guys know who that is. Uh, so he and I and Josh Axe and Shiloh Harris and a bunch of other people were in this movie. And instead of doing like a red carpet thing, they did a virtual. We had I don't know how many thousands and thousands, 12,000 people, something like this, just for the freebie preview. Uh, but the actual movie comes out on July 2nd. What day? July 2nd. This movie is literally about exactly what it says, the conspiracy to keep you sick. And once you've come in and you hear this, uh, first of all, watch this, everybody. Raise your hand if you're a patient. If you're a patient now, just so almost every hand. Now, your guests, we love that you're here. Now, watch this. As a patient, when you came to the office and you saw your x-rays and the explanation of what was going on internally and why you weren't healing, raise your hand if you felt like, man, I wish I'd have heard this before. And every single time. Now, you be me and you walk room to room and know someone goes, oh, yeah, I'm off all of my drugs. And you're like, yes. And you go to the next one. Someone goes, yeah, my disease is gone. You're like, hoo And you go to the next one. He goes, yeah, my infertility gone. And you go to the next one and you walk room to room to room. And it's like miracle, miracle, miracle. And all of a sudden you just start levitating room to room to room. <laughs> and then, and then you go down the hallway to meet a new person. And what ends up happening is I am so jacked up with hope that I walk into a room with somebody who is lost all hope that have, have had their hope, they had 17 different people say, no, I can fix that, even if they're all the alternative people. And they go, yeah, okay. And I'm like, you should have been with me the last 17 people I saw, right? And so this movie is literally that passion brought to life. And I can tell you, there is a secret. And the secret is that you're fearfully and wonderfully made and God never made junk. And I can tell you, let me help you believe that even more than you do now. I mean, I'm speaking literally to the choir. You guys paid your money, you drank the Kool-Aid, and now you're like the, <laughs> the crazy people. However, the tens of thousands of people that are watching this right now, maybe you didn't hear this, but I want to reinsert it again so that you guys get it till your fingers are pruny in it. Can I, can I just get you guys with me on that? So what does that look like? It is just the chiropractic component. And I, you know what's crazy? I hate to use the word chiropractic because as soon as I say chiropractic, Everybody thinks they know what chiropractic is now, and yet almost nobody knows what chiropractic is because everybody thinks chiropractic is popping your spine, cracking your neck, some type of you know cheap, crappy, unscientific, um, lesser than a medical doctor type of something that some weird people do over there, right? Which if you really understood the creation that you are and you remove interference, all of a sudden, guess what? You don't need their stinking drugs. You don't need their stupid surgeries most of the time. All of that stuff starts to wiggle its, wiggle its way out of your life. Right? Man, I, could, I just I could do more. This right there will change your whole life. I remember when I was 23, and you guys have heard the story, but when I had broken the state record on the swim team, football, soccer, all these things, and I literally didn't have anything quote-unquote wrong with me, and my heart literally started dying in my chest, going to 240 beats a minute and stopping for two seconds at a time, That'll make you pause and reflect. And when you get to the cardiologist and says you need surgery today, otherwise you're going to die, and you drive home because you said no and hope that I don't die on the, in the car on the way home, and someone says go to a chiropractor, and you've worked at the busiest emergency room in the United States, and the only thing you heard about chiropractic is quackery, shiftiness, uh, not real doctors, no scientific, could be dangerous, and you go heart surgery and drugs the rest of your life or some weird something <laughs> over here. Right? You end up sometimes going where? Weird. To the something weird, right? <laughs> Guys at home, welcome to weird. <laughs> but guess what? Start, I, thank God, I, he, he literally put me into an office that was not like 95% of offices just cranking and 
taking insurance and cracking on people. This, this guy who I thought was a fanatic literally believed that he could remove interference right where the nerves go off to my heart. Where's it at? Well, you can't really see it. But right, well, I'm not going to move that either. Anyway, where it goes off to my heart. Can you see that? The point is, he removed the interference from my spine. And as a result, guess what happened to an irreversible uh, condition, medical condition inside my chest? Without surgery, without drugs, it completely reversed it. I've never had the issue. And so God saved me, and my payback is making sure every single person has the same opportunity. Is it a cure-all for everything? No, you had a whole life before you got here. But isn't it easier? It is so much easier. But this is literally, it's, you know what this is like? This is like the connector box at your house, the, the breaker box. If I just click the breaker to your back lights on your back porch, I don't care how many times you change the wiring or you change the bulb or whatever you do, it's not coming back on until you what? Go back onto the switch at the box. I don't care how many drugs you take for all the organs in your life, but this is not coming back on until this is there. So simple. This is the connector. Do you know what one of my joys is in my whole life? Other than talking about Jesus, this right here, literally showing people, this is in the office here, showing a patient their x-rays and showing them the spine and teaching them exactly what I heard. To me, there is the revelation of Jesus and then the revelation of how you're created and be able to, to really work with that so that if I'm ever having issues, I go back to the design again, right? And some of you guys are like, well, that just sounds so overly simple. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, that's, that's exactly what it is. But here's where most people stay, right? Most people stay somewhere on this scale and they have a, they have a symptom meter. No, I'm doing pretty good today. Doing pretty good today, right? If the only time you brushed your teeth is when your teeth felt good, <laughs> am I right? Right? You know what? I have had so many people, and I'm so glad I had so many people come back since the whole COVID thing, and they just kind of were taking some time off social distancing and staying out of the office and not wanting to get around people. I've had people come back. But do you know what has driven the majority of the people back? It's not that they actually were like, oh, it's time now. I was told that I could be safe and I can go back to the office now. <laughs> no, you know what it was? It was all their lifestyle and officing at home at their kitchen table or whatever, and the stress and all their, and all their subluxations pattern brought back the expression of symptoms, and they're like, boy, I knew I needed to get back again. And in my mind, I'm thinking, you needed to get back the first adjustment that you missed. And it's because the moment that you start having symptoms, how much function did you have to lose? Based on, based on literally, you have to lose 40% function be down here. And we're taught that what? Take what? Take a medication. If you take a medication for high blood pressure, is it fixed? Let me prove it to you. Stop taking the blood pressure medication. Right? What happens? I start losing more and more function. But now, if I take the medication and I think it's fixed, but I still don't fix the problem, guess what? I still keep getting dysfunctions, right? Because my body's it literally foundationally is not working right. And so I start getting more and more stuff. Cholesterol, depression, diabetes, all the rest. That's okay, because what can we do? more and more meds. This is the cycle of life for most people. And we take 25 million pills per hour in the United States. We're the sickest group of human beings, not only on the planet, but in the history of the human race in the United States. Geographically, because you live here, you're more likely to die at the hands of medicine than any other place. And I'm not, listen to me, my brothers and sisters that are in medicine right now, that's a hard place to be working. And I really do appreciate that we have some critical care specialists in the world that save lives. But I can tell you this, the number one cause of death in the United States and the number one cause of death to COVID patients is actually medical intervention, just so we're real clear. In fact, if you get put on a ventilator, it, it actually gives the hospital like $39,000 cash from the government, but you have a, a 80% chance of never getting off a ventilator if you get on one because the ventilator makes it worse. And I'm not saying, that, listen, I don't mean to, to go in a different direction, but the point is, where should we go? We should be looking at this. The God design of 100% function. In fact, if you were functioning great, you probably would never would have come to my office because it took something to get you to move, right? But here's the problem. Let's not have something to keep us moving. Let's go back to the principle. What's the principle? Your whole life should be this if it comes to your health. How do I actively do something continually to be working on my function so that I'm always getting a little bit what? A little bit better. I was talking about Joe wherever Joe is. Joe turned into a pink purse. He had to leave. So Joe... It's like, wow, Joe was right there. So Joe, Joe has been in the office. Here's the thing. 
So Joe, Joe will see this later, but Joe, Joe has been in the office for uh, over a decade, maybe 15 years, something like this. But Joe has a fusion in his neck from his skull down to the bottom of his neck. Nothing moves. If you notice, Joe, he moves like this, like that. Uh, they've never done surgeries like that or since. I think the guy was just experimenting with Joe. Uh, but Joe, even though you don't see his spine look perfect and like gorgeous or whatever else, you know, Joe is as regular as the sun. He comes in every single week. Some of you guys have seen Joe every single week, every single week, every single week. And one of my favorite things in the whole world is once a year, I get to take a picture of Joe's neck. And Joe has all of the weight and all of the pressure, literally, of his entire neck on just one corner of a bone that shifted almost halfway down the other one, literally two bones sticking together. And by all rules of how the body works, that bone should have just destroyed itself and broken down, and every single year that I get to look at his spine, it's not worse, it's what? Better. Why? Because your body is designed to heal. And if it's not healing, guess what? Don't blame God, don't blame your genetics, don't blame your age, don't blame luck. Look back to well into the body on how it's designed and see where it's interfered with. Can I get an amen? Case in point, Brian, right? I make this grainy, and I make this black and white so it doesn't offend anybody. He's big. He's tried everything. This is why I do this, because when he came in, we checked his spine. Guess where the middle of your neck goes to? What metabolic organ? Your thyroid comes in. Guess what? Goes through basically what you're doing here, loses a whole lot of weight, gets off all of his meds. And what does his spine look like now? But why did he lose all the weight? He didn't lose all the weight. He's already done all this stuff before. But the reason that he lost the weight and now not only a lot, a lot of more weight and kept it off is because what's his body doing now? It's healing. Everybody say the word subluxation. I say cancer. You know exactly what I mean. I say subluxation. You guys are like subla. What is it? What was it? I heard Dr. David say that thing one time. I want you to be able to be a source of information about subluxation for the entire world. Because unless you are, guess what? It's just hard. It's like when I was pastoring. If you don't really know how to educationally talk about Jesus, it's like, I I think you should have Jesus. think. But subluxation is the same way. If you have subluxation, you're not living, you're dying. And you're just dying slowly. And it's okay. We'll get to heaven. You just might have to get there faster. Just the, the point is, you literally need to correct, find, and do this. Make sense? Case in point. Case in point. Come here. This is good. This is Amanda. Everybody say hi, Amanda. Hi, Amanda. So, okay. So Amanda came in the office. First of all, Amanda came in because her mom came in, because her mom was sent in by Lucia. Do you guys see the, the process here? So Amanda came in. Uh, I don't think because she was searching us out. I think because her mom said, you're going. But so what, so grandmother, oh, grandmother, that's right. So so what happened, what was going on when you first came in? I had adrenal fatigue. I had an ulcer and I just was tired all the time, tried losing weight. Nothing was working. It was, it was awful. Now you said you went to chiropractors before. I've been a chiropractor for over a decade now. So chiropractor, so what's the difference between, what's the difference between this chiropractic office and and uh, and the ones you've been to. It's custom tailored to everybody. Do you guys feel that too? Do you guys feel like that? Yeah. Custom. So it's customized for you and your spine. I hired a doctor out of the joint one time, and yes, I'm going to say that openly. <laughs> and he was told by the owner to adjust everybody exactly the same way, so people would know what to expect. Yeah, I'm not going to touch that. You just roll with that. Anyway, so you came to us, and then when you came in, what did you find? So what was your spine doing? It was actually had a reverse curve causing everything. And going and getting the regular adjustments from the same chiropractor all the time was making it worse. And I didn't know that. Nobody had ever x-rayed me before. So what she was finding, she was getting wor- – her health was actually getting worse under chiropractic care, right? So she comes in here. You started care with us. Now what happened? No adrenal fatigue. I can jog for the first time in three years. I mean, I'm 30 years old. I should be able to do this stuff. I have two little kids. Like, this has to happen. You know, the ulcer is gone. I have not on any medication anymore. It's amazing. Stop. That's good. Thank you. You and your mom made me cry twice today. There's the corona again. There's the corona again. All right. So I want to I also give you this. Come here, Julia. Come here, Julia. Julia is at the um, yes for Julia. Our sweet Julia. So Julia is at the Mary Kay table, by the way. Who stopped by the Mary Kay table? Anybody? Good. Not enough of you guys go see her. 
Uh, but listen, so um, Julia is a sweetheart. Julia came in, uh, and so just kind of tell us what was happening when you first came in. Well, I had gained weight and couldn't lose it, and I was exhausted, and I was just diagnosed with off the charts ADHD for the first time in my life, and I had constant migraines. Is that enough? There was probably more, but first of all, does anybody think that I might be diagnosed with ADHD as well? <laughs> Okay, but I get it. <laughs> hey, they're timing me. Get back in there. They're timing me. Get in there. That was not... Okay. <laughs> it was not that funny, I, actually. This, this is what hurt looks like. So, so actually, and one thing she did mention is that she uh, was on thyroid meds, okay. right? So uh, Julie came in, and just like every, there's five essentials, but we need to check how your body's either healing or not healing by its foundational um, working, and so we checked the spine nervous system. So you came in, what did we find in your spine? Well, it was not working. Yes. And there, so what was, what was going on with your neck? So my neck, they said, was going the wrong direction, <laughs> like literally, <laughs> as well as my lower back. Yeah. So here's the thing. So Julia, and she told me I could tell you guys this, but Julia's neck was so bad, it was completely backwards. And as bad as that is in destroying her spine, causing arthritis and breaking discs down, Julia wasn't actually seeking out somebody for fixing her neck. She was still spiraling down in her health, so she was seeking people to fix the organs that the neck was causing issue with. Does that make sense? So you came in, and we did, like Amanda said, you know, something very customized for you, and then what started to happen? Well, some miraculous things, actually. And like this, I love it that what they gave us this, y'all, because this is my reminder. As they taught me what everything connects, you know, like it made so much sense to me. And, you know, the scripture talks about getting wisdom and seeking out understanding. So if I can understand something, I can stay with a program. Dang it. Amen. If it's going to be good for me. Good. So um, so it, two things that I didn't expect because Dr. Kimberly told me also that I was going to be brain dead, you know, in a few years if I kept taking that much allergy medicine. <laughs> right? Because I've been on it since I was like three. It causes dementia. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. That literal brain dead. Right. So... Um, my allergy, I don't take any allergy medicine. I'm not on my inhaler. I don't take any medications. Uh, y'all saw the, the picture. Thanks for the great picture. Um, <laughs> losing weight. My, my joints are achy, achy. My adrenals are kicking back in. Here, so here's something. So first of all, can I get a round of applause for that by itself? Thank you, God. But what was, what's so awesome to me in, in this trying to get people to understand it's not about your spine, it's about the organs. Getting adjusted is not about how your back or neck feels or headaches, it's about your organs, it's about your organs. I had somebody the other day that looked at me and goes, it's not working, it, I still hurt. I'm like, it's not about, it's, it's about the organs, it's about the organs. Julia came in, I told you her neck was bad, so she's on thyroid meds, so uh, they were working on getting her neck turned around through her customized program, and then guess what? She goes back, gets her thyroid tested, and it's actually a hyperthyroid, too much working now. It's because she's still taking the meds, and now her thyroid's what again? It's working, so it's producing, and then she's taking. So literally, they had to get her off the medications because she had a hyperthyroid now. And so she's, that's why she was off the meds. So that was awesome. So a round of applause for Julia. I love you. Thank you. Mwah. Good. So imagine the reason that people don't look for chiropractic is because they've been taught for the last 30, 40, 50 years that if you have a symptom, focus on the symptom. Right? Because guess what? Do headaches have a solution in the system currently? Yeah, no, no. They have a solution for the symptom, right? How about menstrual problems? Oh, yeah, we've got a pill for that. How about high blood pressure? Oh, yeah, it's, it happens to be made by snake venom, but it's still there. Depression? Oh, yeah. Now, if you take the depression med, you're twice as likely to be depressed, and it actually causes basal ganglia to die in your brain. So it's a 100% chance in the 21-page article in Frontiers of Psychiatry that it's a 100% chance you will have Parkinson's if you take an antidepressant. But then a numbness and tingling, oh, that probably has nothing to do with your nerves. Sciatica, true. <laughs> Neck pain, dizziness, fatigue. Most people don't realize that when you start having vertigo, it's some of the first signs of actually cognitive decline because it's a functional process of the brain. And then fatigue, acid reflux. Do you see where I'm going with all this? And, you, and so here's the thing. Don't pay attention to the problem. 
pay attention to the symptom. Does that sound familiar? Don't pay attention to what's going on in Washington and legislation. Pay attention to Seattle and the whatever the free capital hill zone. Don't pay attention to what's going on when we have a lack of faith and a relationship with God in the United States. Pay attention to police officers killing innocent people and other people retaliating, killing other people. Pay attention to burning cars. Pay attention to, uh, to, to broken windows and broken glass. Pay attention to the expression of the problem. Don't pay attention to the problem. Because if you pay attention to the problem, someone will wake up and go, we need to do something about that. See that? You didn't think I was taking chiropractic down like that direction, did you? <laughs> but this, this is what it takes. Now, almost everybody in here has done this. What's the first step? Make an appointment, come in. It takes 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, and it's literally chiropractic's at the center of this. So many of you guys have found offices and places that we are actually in concert with that do more natural things. But I'm going to tell you, if you're subluxated and choking off a nerve to an organ, I don't care how many acupuncture visits you have. I don't care how much detox or nutritional changes you make, uh, how much sleep studies you get done. If you do not have a nerve supply, do you see how you're going to hit a wall eventually? Got it? That's why this is at the center. And it's personalized. It's what Amanda said. It's exactly what you need. Raise your hand if you think you've got a once-in-a-lifetime, only-on-earth-ever spine. Now, everybody raise your hand because there's... 304 octillion different ways a spine can subluxate. I've never seen one exactly the same, and I never will. You are a fingerprint, which means your care should be what? A fingerprint, exactly. And there are four of us that do this. This is my favorite slide in the whole, in the whole slideshow right now. Um, so just so you know, I literally could relinquish it. I, I had something happen this week for the first time ever. First of all, does everybody realize... You're going to be adjusted by me until Jesus calls me home. Everybody get that? I saw a lady one time. She was, uh, no, he was, he was, a guy was a hundred years old, uh, up in Virginia and adjusting three days a week, still driving to work. When I saw that, I'm like, oh yeah, that's exactly right. But can I just tell you with Dr. Shannon and Dr. Chris and my wife, I know that if God calls me to go do things like make movies, go to Washington, start becoming a representative and do some things that I need to get involved with, I know one thing. Everybody that's a patient in my office knows the principle enough that you would always continue to get adjusted and you've got people to, who literally love you like I do and have hands as good as mine so that they can make that happen. Does that make sense? So it's just so good. Isn't that awesome? So just really good. Awesome. And by the way, that's exactly what I look like all day long right there. <laughs> awesome. Good. All right. So I'm going to switch it over Wait, to her. I don't, is my, am I good? You guys hear me? Yay. Okay, good. Because the holding that might be fun for me. Bye. Love you. <laughs> okay. So we're going to talk about exercise and then we're going to transition into toxicity. So hang tight, buckle up. We're going to hit a couple really important pieces. Remember, the puzzle piece, there's a puzzle piece on there that has the exercise. So how many of you would say that if you put your magnet on your refrigerator, the puzzle piece would be taken apart and kind of maybe on the side of the fridge? Anybody? Okay. So that means that we have an opportunity, right? We have an opportunity now to actually bring the puzzle piece closer to its home and start activating that. Okay? Amen? All right, so we're going to talk about the Max T3 program. If you're a patient, which most of you are, Max T3 is our workout routine, workout program. It's a high intensity workout. T3 stands for time, tempo, and type. That means that we, we recommend, and when you look at the videos that we have, because when you're a patient, you got that bookmark and it's got all these workouts on there. Time typically is 12 minutes. So you can actually get a really good workout in 12 minutes. So nobody has an excuse that you don't have what? Time. So you can get a really good workout in 12 minutes. So time, but you can change it to 20 minutes. Like you can change it to six if you only have six. Like you can adjust the time, time and then tempo. Tempo, some of us are moving much faster than others, right? So you change the tempo. As you get in shape to get in shape, because some of us have to get in shape to get in shape, right? As you get in shape to get in shape, your tempo should increase. Yes? You might start at a pretty slow tempo. 
Like you might be walking and then pretty soon you can get a light jog in there. So your tempo changes. So time, tempo, type. Type means different types of exercises, different types of things you can do. You might, one of you might be doing a burpee and the other person might be doing an air squat. Some of you might be air punching. Different types of exercise. You can do a whole lot of exercises and Brenna's actually really, really good. If you ever watch her, she does videos. She'll show the exercises. She's got her kid running up and up and down the, the, the front of the driveway, and now he's riding his bike now, which is fun. And so three years old, and he's like riding down the driveway with no no um, training wheels on, and he's just going down the driveway. We're like, okay, here we go, you know, right? And so that's what Brenna will do. So plug into those videos. Again, on Herb Family Friends, you'll see a lot of those types of things. So Max T3, that's the first thing that you can actually do, a very good like, you don't have to have a gym to do max T3, right? So that gives you something that takes the excuse out of it. Now, this is what you don't want to be doing, okay? I have seen people out there, guys, this is super dangerous. I'm going to hit in, I'm gonna hit on the mask thing in just a minute, but don't do this. If you're exercising, you will not make it with a mask on like this. You have to be sucking in oxygen. The key behind, which is why one of our essentials is oxygen, fitness, because when you exercise, when, let's just say I'm on a treadmill right now. If I'm on a treadmill and I'm walking and I've got my book in front of me and I'm walking at this pace, how much exercise am I sucking in? Not much. What I should be doing is putting that treadmill, you know, speeding the pace up a little bit and hitting it, right? So when I hit it real hard and fast, I'm sucking in a lot of what? Oxygen. That's what helps you burn fat. That's what helps you lose weight. That's what helps you heal. You must have oxygen. So that's why this piece, that doesn't work. Okay, and we're going to show you what that is in just a second. But I want to get, I want to hit on the body type specific workout. Okay, so if you wrote down what you think your body type was, then now you want to go and you want to look at, okay, if I think I'm this, then this is probably how I should work out. Okay, so for a type one pair of body type, look at the picture. Remember, that's the person that's Got evenly spaced shoulders and hips, and when you gain weight, it's kind of all over, okay? And so this particular body type needs to work out using strength training four consecutive days in a row, four consecutive days in a row, so maybe Thursday through Sunday, Monday through Thursday, four consecutive days. Now, this is ideal. When is, when is the best time? In the morning, but when's the other best time? Anytime, right? So here's the thing. Four consecutive days in a row, if you're a para body type, is the best for you. Why? Because paras actually are in a state of catabolism. Everybody say catabolism. Catabolism. So what catabolism means for a para is that if you don't burn energy the right way, it's going to use your own muscle and burn your own muscle. So muscle will be burning. That's catabolism. You're going to burn your own muscle for energy. So you might be a slender person, but you step on that scale and your body fat is super high, right? A skinny fat person, you've heard of the term, skinny fat person. So paras, if they don't strength train to really put stress on the muscle to build it back up again, they will use their own muscle for energy, okay? They crave sugar and need what? Protein. So this is really important, and it's a, it's a game changer. If you're really trying to fine-tune your workouts right now, and you, you kind of are looking for something to kind of help you fine-tune and really sculpt yourself or really take it to the next level, this is going to be what you want to do. The catabolism, that piece, that four consecutive days, and then three sets of each body part, all body parts. Basically, three sets of every muscle in your body. If you go in the gym, you're going to three sets of every body part. That's ideal. That's the best way for, for a pair of body type. One of the sets needs to be 90% of your max. One set. I didn't say that for any of the other body parts, just this one. One set because of the catabolism that you're in all the time. Okay. Now, six days a week of cardio, but four of them are short. Just short days. You can go off for a walk, you know, short days of cardio, and two of them are longer, 90 minutes. So that's ideal. Again, if that's you, take a picture of that. And this is something that you want to get in the core versus concept, work the system, invest the time in what? Problem solve along the way. 
So that's a para body type. If that's you, that's the ideal situation for you to do for your body type. Now, estros. Estros actually have a really hard time detoxifying. You see the word bold there? That means a person who's more narrow in their shoulders and they're wider in their hips and they gain weight in their thighs. Okay, that's an estro body type. They need a lot more cardio and they need to do that first before they start everything else because they have a hard time detoxifying. Because they don't detoxify very well, they end up with cysts and masses and they can get tumors and they can get issues with gallbladder and things like that. So they need help detoxifying. Those organs don't do what they need to as as good as they should, so they need help with that. That's where you'll see they make really great runners. Now they may not want to run, <laughs> right? But they make really great runners. So knowing five days a week of strength training, you're going to mix it up between upper and lower body, six days a week for 25 to 40 minutes of cardio. And make sure you do it at the beginning. So sometimes people ask, like, when should I do it, before or after? For that body type, they need to do it first, okay? So that's an astral body type. Supras, stretching is very important. So this body type is wider in their shoulders, more narrow in their hips, okay? So they, they will gain weight from here up. Everything right here is where they gain weight, and then their legs are just straight, okay? And so this particular body type needs, they like protein, right? This is a person that could eat a steak, period, nothing else. And then what happens is they don't digest it very well, which is why they need more vegetables and fruit. They're not drawn to it, but they need it. So they don't digest their protein very well, and what happens is the crystals from the protein hang out in the joints. So they wake up, in the morning, and they're stiff. And all day long, they're stiff because the crystals are hanging out in the joints. So they need to do a lot of what? A lot of stretching. A lot of stretching. So this particular body type, you'll find them stretching all the time, and you feel stiff. Stretching is one is your friend. This particular body type needs a lot of stretching. So they can, they actually hold muscle very well. So if you're that person, when you work out, you're like, you put on muscle and it stays. That's different than the para. They put on muscle real fast in two weeks. If they start a workout routine, they'll put the muscle on really fast, but as soon as they quit, it's gone. Now, Supra, they start a workout routine, they put on muscle, and they hold it. Dr. Chris is a perfect example. (laughs) This COVID-19, I'm like, have you worked out? No, my gym's closed. Have you worked out? No, I'm not throwing you under the bus, Dr. Chris. Sorry. No, I'm like, but he still had his muscle. Like, what's going on? Well, it's a Supra. Supras hold their muscle on. They're stronger in their upper body. Four days a week workout. They mix it up. Upper body, lower body is, how, is best for them to mix it up. And cardio, high intensity, low intensity, six days a week for them. So that's best for the, for the Supra, but a lot of stretching. A lot of stretching is best for the Supra body type. Now the neuro, they need to be outside and move. So that's the person that's same, same, same. All three measurements, up and down. This particular body type is in their head all the time. They're always thinking. they got million-dollar ideas rolling around their their head all the time. They love cereal. They could eat it all day long. And they're in their head all the time. That's why they need to get out and move, because if they get out and move and they're out in the environment, it, it distracts them and keeps them out of their head. They have to get outside of their house and get them to move. Okay, so they need to lift. However, they, they can remain soft even when they lift weights. They can remain soft. So they can work a little harder at it because they can remain soft and look young forever, look the same age always. Because that's because they, their, their, their muscle can be very soft looking. Okay, So that's the body type workouts. Does that help? Got the pictures? Everybody good with that? Now we're going to hit on toxins. Let's hit toxins. So before you leave today, if you bought a bundle, make sure you see if you, if you didn't get measured today and you bought a bundle, then you can get measured in the office. But before you leave today... If you bought a bundle, just get see Dr. Dr. Chris or Dr. Shannon, and they're going to go in the front of the office off here to the right, and you can get measured today. Find out what your body type is, okay? So you make sure you do that today. Let's hit on toxicity. This is the one that generally people feel like they want to burn their house down after some of the things that we talk about. I think it might be a little easier today, though, so hang, hang in there. So minimizing the exposure to toxins, this is huge, Okay. Huge, and I'm not going to get up here and get all controversial with you. I'm going to get very scientific with you, okay? Just make sure you understand why you're doing things 
and the consequences of the why behind when you do things, okay? I shared this post and got put in Facebook jail. (laughs) Anybody else get put in Facebook jail? (laughs) I actually got put in Facebook jail for posting vitamin D. So, there you go. So, this post was shared 118 times between this one and this one. These two things got shared 118 times until I got put in Facebook jail. And so here's why this is such an important slide, okay? When you put that mask on, it, re- it causes you to go into a state called hypercapnia. So you put the mask on, and what's supposed to happen is you breathe in what? And you breathe off what? Right? So when you don't have a way to breathe the right way in the oxygen and off the The CO2, what happens is you go into a state called hypercapnia. Guys, this is dangerous. Now, could we help it, most of us? Most of us couldn't help it. Because if you wanted to do certain things that you really wanted to do, you know, you were in handcuffs. Besides Facebook jail, you were in, right? You had to do it to go to certain places. So, but you got to understand why. And that's the piece, like knowledge. If you have the knowledge, you have, you actually are super empowered When you have knowledge, that gives you freedom to make the choices and why you're making those choices. So the mask, carbon dioxide toxicity, it creates visual disturbances. It creates auditory disturbances, reduced hearing. If you have carbon dioxide toxicity, I actually had a patient, I had a whole family. When I first opened my practice, the entire family on Christmas Day died except for one because of CO2 poisoning. One whole family and the guy came in and he had co2 toxicity and there was a major challenge because of the co2 toxicity and lost the entire rest of his family so it sticks in my head when i see this kind of stuff and some of the craziness the decisions that we're making right now in the new abnormal right so if you look at what happens to your brain centrally drowsiness mild narcosis what is that that's the stupor, just the drowsiness. Like, it's what happens to me when I drive for a long period of time. I get drowsy. So narcolepsy, you guys have heard of that? So dizziness, confusion, headache, unconsciousness. I've had more patients with migraine headaches and headaches and just feeling just kind of disoriented since they've been forced to wear this mask. The next piece, shortness of breath or already worried about that and now we're creating the actual issue that we're told right that makes sense muscular tremors a lot of twitching and tremoring because if you don't get oxygen then it can't talk to your body and then the whole rest of the body is not working in sync the other piece increased heart rate and blood pressure just check your blood pressure through this period of time people wearing masks their blood pressure is going through the roof why the heart's having to work so hard Try to get the oxygen everywhere because you're sitting here breathing your own CO2. You guys with me? So, guys, take this information and share it with Costco. (laughs) Share it with the teachers and the administrators at your school. Share it with the presidents of your school. Share it with the pastors. Right? Next face mask force virus into the brain and more. This is Dr. Russell Blaylock, MD. Okay? This guy knows what he's talking about. The mask can easily force the virus and bacteria in because you're rebreathing. You're rebreathing all day. It increases the concentration of virus in your brain, causes oxygen deprivation, leading to headaches, causes too much carbon dioxide in your blood. The bottom line is if you're not sick, what? Now, do you, will you see patients in my office wearing it? Yeah, if they're, we do have patients that are really fighting major health issues. Different story. This is different than what we're being told right now, guys. And there's no condemnation in any of us in this room. What I want to do more than anything else is to empower you so that you can be free. Amen? Okay. This is the other piece. Okay? I'm sorry, but... Right? Everywhere we go, even if in your own home you've got Young Living, which they ran out of thieves. So they, right, the thieves sanitizer, they ran out of that. So we're starting to make our own stuff, but it's back now. Praise the Lord. But Purell, this got triclosan in it. 
triclosan, you put it on your hand and it immediately goes to your liver. What does your liver do? Detoxes. <gasps> Hello? Like that's, what, does it even make sense? Lysol, Clorox, that, those are our main friends or foes, right, during this period of time, right? So this is super important. These are our toxic cleaners. Now here's how the body works. Your liver is your detox organ. These toxins come in, they go through two steps in the liver before you poop and pee them out. Bottom line, okay? Now, if this is how the body is designed and how God made the system up, then doing things like this blocks it. The freshman 15 eating or the stress eating. Did anybody else stress eat? I mean, I did. I mean, I had to course correct myself real quick on the way, right? But this stress eating blocks, it's a phase one blocker. So look at phase one. If the toxin comes in and you need to poop and pee it out that day to do the right thing, are you going to poop and pee it out? What's it going to do? It's going to stay in your system and you're going to do what? You're going to be sick, right? Now look at the next one. Phase two blocker, phase two blockers, the COVID crisis cleaning that I just told you. Now, even if in your own home you were doing all the right things, y'all still went out in the community. You still went out shopping. You still went out to all the other places that are super ridiculously overly sanitized. I actually had a patient that she came in. She got on the table and I was helping her up off the table and her hands, she's 35 years old and her hand felt like she was 105. It was wrinkled and crinkled and dry and almost like you could peel it off. And I'm like, what is going on with your hands? I said, have you been washing your hands that much? She goes, all day long. Guys, you have a certain level of bacteria that you need all over to be touching things that your immune response can respond and you can build your immune response up. I'm going to prove to you how what, what's been going on actually is not working. And I'm going to prove to you on myself here in just a second. I'll show you my labs. I'm going to show you my labs during this entire process. So here's my lab. This is my lab. Rebecca f filled this out March 25th. So I took my test probably the first week in Mar March because it takes about two to three weeks to do the test. So when did COVID hit? Right? So I took my test pre-COVID. And the reason why I took my test is because every year I do this. This test I'm talking about is metabolics testing. It's a blood and urine test that we, that we test for. So... I test my family every year. I've been doing this for nine years. Every year, we first we tested it. We got on a protocol that our body told us that we needed. And then we got on a maintenance, which is really what foods we should eat and what vitamins we should take. And each one of us has our own separate thing in my family. All five of us, something different. And so when I tested myself, it was time to test because I just tested David and I just tested Zanae and I just tested Zoe. It was my turn. And Zachary's in college, so he's next. Zachary. <laughs> Okay, so I tested myself, and I tested, and I was having a lot of symptoms, like digestive system sy symptoms. And so I was like, man, I got this belly dome that I talked about in the Pooptastic talk. I'm like, what is going on? The gurgling and the gas and the bloating, and like, I don't care how good I eat, it was there. And so I tested myself. Well, I had had food poisoning that I got, and I never got rid of. So the critters I picked up in the food poisoning, I kept. They hung out and had a party. I don't know if you guys have ever had a party that you didn't invite the guests there. They weren't invited. So here's what happened. I'll break down the test for you. If you look at these three sections, toxicity, GI, and mood-related, stress hormones, okay? So on my test, when I tested, the flags are in pink, okay? The green is good, okay? The flags are in pink. The two flags in the digestive, bacteria and leaky gut. I had leaky gut. Anybody else had leaky gut? No, don't raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> I had leaky gut. So in nine years, I have never had leaky gut. I, now I got leaky gut. I'm like, what the heck? My entire staff was looking at my labs. They were like, Dr. Herb, what happened to you? All of it was so funny. Yes, I have leaky gut. I'm, I'm right there with you. Hi, my name is Kimberly. <laughs> so I have leaky gut. As a result of the leaky gut, so toxins look good though, right? Green, right? So what I had had in the past cleared up. 
And down here in the mood related, that one's good. But this one is serotonin. Now, what does serotonin do? It's your happy hormone. So maybe not so happy. Oh, maybe a little moody. I don't know. So leaky gut was a big thing, though. That was the new thing I had to take care of. So this is pre-COVID. Okay. So I spend 30 days and I do the gut protocol to heal my gut. So when you have leaky gut, you may be taking a lot of vitamins and you think you need them all, but when you have leaky gut, you're just leaking everything out, right? So you have to focus on the gut and literally just 30 days of heal the gut. Eat the right foods, advanced plan, heal the gut, kill the critters, and rebuild the gut flora. That was my 30 days. I said, I'm going to retest in 30 days. Let's just see what it looks like in 30 days. So I retested in 30 days. Now, when I retested, it was I got my test results last week, so this is like hot off the press. I'm in Orlando, and Rebecca sends me my test results, and I look, and I'm like, whoo, hallelujah. Guess what healed? My leaky gut healed, right? So good on me, right? Good job. But let's get a little context. COVID crisis happens, okay? So what came in? in a high chronic level of toxicity. 30 days. What was the only difference in my life? COVID. Now I had thieves and I had all, I do all the right cleaners at my house, but I'm up, I'm here and I'm everywhere else. I'm in the grocery store. I traveled, right? I went everywhere else like you guys do. I mean, as many places as you could go, right? And all the level of bull, bull I'm about to cuss. I'm about to cuss right now. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, caught it right <laughs> I'm like I take so good of my good I take good care of my body like what the heck I didn't invite these guys in this guy so toxicity chronic level toxicity but guess what else healed this is kind of cool the serotonin why serotonin's made where and your gut so there's your proof positive that for those of you who are taking an antidepressant because you feel depressed, you heal your gut, you get to the cause, you, you heal the depression. Do you understand? Yes? Good? Okay. So that was the proof positive of what things were working and what weren't, wasn't working. And I wanted to share that with you and just kind of on a vulnerable, hey, I'm with you. Like I'm walking through this stuff with you guys. So does that help? Okay. Okay. Right, I'm just going to show you the test. It's a, this test I'm talking to you about is just the urine part. So what I only showed you was my urine test results, and it's organics. So for those of you who are holding your test, you have it at home, just do the test. Do this weekend. Those of you who haven't tested, put it on your sheet as an action step for you, part of your goal or your plan. If those of you who are like, I came here specifically to get the test so I can get 15% off, do it. But make sure you test. This is why you do it. Most of us have been in this crazy crisis and we didn't ask for some of the crap that we've got, but we got it, right? And so the last piece I'll just say is I just want to say that from here forth, because there's going to be a lot of things that are kind of out of our control, we are going to be getting in a whole lot more toxins than we normally do, even when we try to do all the things right, young living and all, right? So this is why I'm telling everybody, make sure you're on a detox system and make sure you're on 50B probiotic. Because you can't sit there and wipe off all this, the good bacteria off your hands and bleach everything down and think we're going to end up in a better place. We have to have good probiotic to, to keep the gut healthy. Okay? Good? Is that helpful? All right. Babe, we're ready for you. The, the, anyway, so let me just say, so this, we got okay. squeezed this last season going through this whole crazy season, just like you guys did. Mm -hmm. And when you get squeezed... You really do kind of find out what you're made of. And what ended up happening is we just, we literally went back to basics and said, man, people are suffering. People are all dying. We got to talk to people. We got to do something. So, uh, you know, my, my MO is when I get stressed, I, anybody, when you get stressed or you have a fight with your spouse, you just start cleaning stuff and doing stuff. Yeah. Anybody else? Like I go, I go into doer mode. I'm like, I just got to do something. I'm going to yeah. clean something. I'm going to go do something. And so I went into that way just with work and everything else. And so, uh, but, but what happened was this, this season has literally been a season of passion for us. Mm -hmm. And so that's why this movie coming out is so important to us. But I put this together because this is Lucia Huff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought I might see Lucia here. Uh, but she has sent... She's online, though. She's online. Hey, her Lucia. Now I'm nervous, mm -hmm. actually. 
I was going to do better when I didn't think you were watching. Uh, but Lucia, you know what? Lucia has a, a, the heart of, that a lot of you guys do. I could look around the room and see how many people that you guys have talked to already about what we do in the office, how many people you've sent to the office. You know, literally some of you guys haven't been here that long. You've talked to a hundred people, but it's like, for me, this really epitomizes what we're trying to create. I'm trying not to create a bunch of healthy people. I'm trying to create, we are trying to create a bunch of healthy people who want to go change the world because it's almost criminality what's happening out there. And so, you know, so, so Lucia literally has invited so many people to, like, I I could probably have a Lucia Huff dinner, actually, Mm -hmm. just, just her, four generations. uh, generations. So literally, boom, 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 all the way through four generations, four generations. Just amazing. So I, I literally, um, that's what I want for you guys to be. I want you guys to be people that open your mouth. The problem with it is nobody wants to open their mouth anymore because nobody wants to offend anybody. Uh, and politically correct, I believe is a spirit of antichrist because Amen. literally all, all, all you got to do is just roll up and go, Hey, uh, you know, if I, if I had a plate of hors d'oeuvres and I was at a party and I was serving and I brought them to you and somebody goes, Oh no, uh, no, I don't want any of that. I, I wouldn't take that plate and go, darn, I knew nobody would want that. It's crazy. <laughs> right? What do you do? If they don't want it, what do you do? I'm so excited about these hors d'oeuvres. They're so amazing. Would you like some of these hors d'oeuvres? You go to the next person. But we take things personally, too. What I would like to see is every single person get involved. Raise your hand if you got to this office because somebody told you. Bless me. It's you so good to hear pants. laughter. I did. Actually. So uh, if you guys don't mind, let's just pray it up. Let's pray. Uh, and then we'll go from there. So, Father, okay. we just love you and praise you. And thank you, Father, for today. Thank you, Father, that you're not just healing us, but you're healing our country. Thank you, Father, for your spirit. And I ask God that as every single one of us takes small steps towards you, that you take great God-sized steps towards us and that we would be infectious in a world that needs you. So we love you and praise you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming, guys.